Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Kingdom Hearts 2, aka Kingdom Hearts 3. Effectively. Third game in the series. Oh, what's up, guys? Sorry for being a little late. Uh, I literally just woke up, like, looks like about 30 minutes ago. So I'm a little out of it still. Um, but I was already running over some of the things I wanted to talk about in my head. Uh, last night. Um. <sighs> Hello, OJ BD. Shoutouts. Welcome to my stream. Uh, hope you enjoy. We're going to be going through Kingdom Hearts 2 here and talking a lot about the lore. Because that's kind of what I do. Oops. We need to affect the, uh, lighting on the green screen, looks like. As per usual. Let's just reacquire that. There we go. Oh my goodness. Um, no, I've actually been building Kingdom Hearts 3 myself, Samurai. One heart at a time. Now, uh, it just occurred to me something that actually kind of irritates me. And I've decided that uh, I'm going to be doing a decent amount of this game off camera. Uh, unless I can think of something to really talk about. So here's the thing. For those of you not aware, uh, there is a uh, part of this game that is like the leveling spot. And I knew about this spot, everyone knew about this spot. And it was pretty much necessary to, to grind out those last uh, 100 levels without you know your, your brains oozing out of your uh, ears, right? I'm referring, of course, to the plateau in the Lion King world. You get up there, you get the right setup with a, you know, a couple of specific pieces of equipment, a couple of spe specific things equipped, and you just grind face on those things forever. I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. That has been removed from the Final Mix Edition, which is probably the single biggest thing that they changed in the Final Mix Edition that pisses me off. The fact that they actually got rid of that, the fact that they actually shoved that out, literally, there's literally no purpose in doing that other than making leveling slower and more boring. It's the only possible reason to do that. And for them to specifically seek out that leveling spot and remove it is just really irritating to me. So, the next best leveling method near that I can tell, based on my own experience with the game a couple weeks ago, and from what I've read everyone else, is the world that never was. Just going up and down the tower and killing the nobodies. So, whatever. Um, it's also irritating to me, if I just feel like bashing for some moment here, uh, that they got rid of the lucky strikes. There are, uh, let's see, hang on a second here. I actually was just looking this up. Um, in Mertz 2, here we go. There are two lucky luckies you cannot get unless you're on critical mode, period. They don't exist. And for, the, for those of you who have played this game uh, before, you may remember uh, there was a lucky lucky on, I believe, the Meteor Staff from Donald, which you got in the parts of the Caribbean. There was a lucky lucky on the Keyblade you get from Way to the Pooh. Those are gone. And there's a couple of other spot uh, lucky luckies. It basically, you cannot get as many before. Which, again, the only purpose in removing that is to add grind. Because the only purpose that Lucky Strike adds is to make it easier to grind out the crafting stuff. To get some of the high-level crafting stuff. So, once again, a change that just completely irritates me. Here's Final Mix. By the way, go grind your balls off. Uh, why? Why? Okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done. Done ranting. <sighs> so yeah, we're going to be doing this on beginner mode. I've actually thought about this for a bit. Um, while there are genuine benefits to doing it on critical mode, I th feel like the aggravation would not be worth it. Uh, so we're not going to. I'll just do some ball grinding. Off camera, probably. Unless we can think of something to talk about. <sighs> oh, trust me, Hourglass. It's going to skyrocket in this one. So we're doing beginner, like I said. Um, I want to... Uh, I'm debating if I want to share a, a story about this game. Um, I'm debating if I want to. I, I think I'll just say this. This game came out at a point in my life uh, when... Life was horrible. I'll just, be, I'll just be honest about it. Life was really, really, really horrible. And, uh, 
And I know this is going to sound incredibly pathetic, and that's probably because it is, but at the time, I literally only had one thing that was giving me any uh, positivity. And it was the fact that Kingdom Hearts 2 was going to come out in like three months or something like that. Um, I was really excited for it. I'd been following Kingdom Hearts 2. You know, obviously I'd been a big Kingdom Hearts fan, as I've been talking about. Uh, I'd been following the Japanese <clears throat> community and the theorycrafting community from uh, the first game and from Chain of Memories. And so, uh, thank you, Hourglass. And so, you know, I was, I, you know, I was really excited for this game. I was really hopeful to find out what was going on with the nobodies, and the the combat looked amazing, and it looked like a great game. And I was really hyped for it. And it was like the one thing that I had to look forward to. Um, while I was playing this game, Kingdom Hearts Two, you know, so to to make this clear, I had nothing other than this game still. I mean, it was a great game, but I had nothing other than this game. Uh, while I was playing it, towards the end, while I was doing some end level grinding, uh, that's when I got my job at Net Standard. So... Yeah. Just kind of wanted to share that story. So, uh, let's go ahead and begin this, and of course we're going to have to immediately mute the damn game, because... Screw EMI. I'm just going to mute that right now, just to be safe. And mute my headphones, so... We don't have any people hearing it through my headphones, through the microphone. <sighs> eh, I'm debating Ultimate Paradox. I don't think there's any real need to watch the secret ending. It doesn't actually add anything, especially since uh, we will just be seeing it in Birth by Sleep. That is the one hourglass, yes. That's the job I held for many, many years after that. Up until uh, about three years ago, actually. Oh. <clears throat> a scattered dream that's like a far-off memory, and a far-off memory that's like a scattered dream. I just want to line the pieces up, yours and mine. Rox is referring to Sora there. Now, it's a damn shame I have to mute this, because this is probably my favorite of the vocal songs. There's no denying. This is my favorite of the vocal songs across all of uh, Kingdom Hearts. And this is probably my second favorite of the uh, the cutscenes, the intro cutscenes. Lots of great symbolism here. <clears throat> Lots of uh, fairly obvious symbolism, but some great symbols. So yeah, the memories of Kairi fading. Memories of Riku, which didn't actually fade, but whatever. You know, the point being, all of that fading away. And then he ends up at Hollow Bastion. We also get to see Hollow Bastion in full CGI render. It looks amazing. As of course it should. The obvious scene in Hollow Bastion with uh, An uh, Seeker of Darkness over there, Sod. <clears throat> it's been a, a, around a year, Hourglass. Sometimes I wish they'd made that a little bit longer than just a single year, because it feels like a lot more has changed in that time. Uh, maybe that's just me, I don't know. And of course, we defeat Sod, open the door, well, excuse me, close the door to the... Uh, the realm of oh, darkness. There's Shion. I mean, Kyrie. Sorry. <laughs> and of course, Kyrie has effectively forgotten us, as I've already mentioned. <clears throat> hey, Nick Nick, did I already say that? Either way, hi. This is a nice effect here that's about to happen. Sorry, Final Cloud, I can't raise my hand on that one. <laughs> so yeah, end of Kingdom Hearts 1 being shown here as Kyrie is segregated from him. Then a year passes. Kyrie has grown up, somehow, even though it's only been a single year. She's, what, 15 now, I want to say? Something like that? <clears throat> There's Namine, naturally, who at this point still exists, uh, technically. I've always thought that Namine looks much more frail than the other versions of, of well, Kairi and Sora. Uh, I always felt that was done on purpose, too, to kind of emphasize just how, well, weak she is, basically. A brief shot of Diz, an awesome shot of Marluxia. And, of course, Marluxia fighting Sora while Riku is fighting uh, Isod, as we already mentioned. Sora going up. Well, actually, as you can see, it's kind of a bit of a weird situation there. Total darkness. 
Farewell forever, Sora. I like how in this one they make it look like it was Naminé's choice and not Sora's choice and refusing to comfort her and being a dick about it. Sorry. Where are we at in the song? Still music. <clears throat> so Sora drifted into sleep for basically a year. Leading quite naturally to him. Now, as we're well aware, he has been active for some time. <laughs> Basically, they've sensed the very moment that, uh, <clears throat> since the very moment that Sora was uh, unlocked. Almost ready to unmute. So I like this. It's a picture of Sora. I mentioned earlier the dive to the heart and how they're relevant for any given individual. Oh, wait, can we unmute you? We can! Holy crap. We'll talk about uh, Roxas's dive to the heart in a minute. Ah, finally. You have arrived. I've been to see him. He looks a lot like you. Now, Nomura has said this scene didn't literally happen, which... I'm what's left. Or, maybe I'm all there ever was. My name is of no importance. What about you? Do you remember your true name? Sora? <clears throat> I like how they showcase Sora's memories being reattached and rearranged properly. It's a nice tri uh, little thing that they do, basically. Because we see bits and pieces of the cutscenes from the first game, like this, basically. If there are any other worlds out there, why did we end up on this one? Also, kind of summarizing King Hearts One for the this few people who've forgotten it. Connected. Well, who's there? Tied to the darkness. Notice Richard Epcar has replaced Billy Zane Sarah? in those cutscenes. Don't ever change. Hey, Cloudy Code. The door has opened. Hey, LH Grunge. It's only eleven something. You understand nothing. Sora. What's your true name? Death. Or wait. <clears throat> no, we beat him at the uh, clock tower. Well, Samurai, if you think about it, it does actually make sense, unfortunately. Like, if you'll recall, his memories end when he reaches Castle Oblivion. Because that's when they started being tampered with. So this is Roxas. Everyone in the universe figured out his connection to Sora immediately. Yet, to my knowledge, extremely few people actually figured out the specific connection to Sora. If I could share one of the most common theories that several people had, including me and my friend when we played it two, year, two weeks ago for him, the common theory was that this was Sora. Now I know what you're going to say. It is Sora! I don't, I don't mean like as in a technically sense of the word. I mean, literally, that this was actually just Sora in, like, a... Basically in the Matrix, for all intents and purposes. And because he had lacked his memories, he was being put into this Matrix society for his memories to be rebuilt uh, within him. And that was actually the most common theory I heard about him for a long time, actually. The funny thing is, well, we could easily say Roxas is Sora's nobody, and that's a degree of truth. I've always felt that's not literally true. Since I've always felt it is more accurate to call Roxas Ventus's nobody. Which also helps Man, explain the uh, disconnect of memories. Yeah, that's just wrong. The cipher's gone too far this time. So here's three totally irrelevant characters that I wish we knew more about. 
Just... <clears throat> I mean, it's true that stuff's been stolen around town, and we've got a score to settle with Cypher and everything. So, if he wants to think we did it, I can't really blame him. See, that's not what really bugs me. His, his, his motions here just make me laugh for some reason. What really bugs me is that he's going around telling everybody we're the thieves. Now the whole town and their mothers are treating us like the Klepto Club. Have you ever been this ticked off before in your life? <laughs> Never. Asking rocks is that. Now, what to do? So as ever, I'm going to just go ahead and be spoiling the crap out of everything because this is a lore run. So these three people aren't actually here. These are data projections. Now, that's actually relevant for a reason I'll talk about in just a second, as soon as this cutscene's over. We could find the real thieves. That would set the record straight. The same reason Orin wasn't hey, cloudy code. That sounds fun. What about Cypher? First, we gotta clear our names. Once we find the real culprit, everyone will get off our backs. Uh, oh no! They're gone! Our... are gone! Oh my god. All are gone? Huh? Now, the problem here is I feel like they kind of screwed up the voice acting in this cutscene. They should have been like, all of our are gone. Or all of our are gone. You know, actually basically have the actors saying it, but instead they just kind of say, all are are gone. They, they, they don't really give the pause there necessary to show that there's a word missing, unless you're actually looking at the subtitles. Huh? Huh? You can't say, why not? Also, well, that line is very. You understand what I'm saying, right? They're saying the word Our "photo." Are gone, stolen, and not just the the word. They stole it too. That's what right. Kind of is that? They stole a so word. I never have pulled that off. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Time for some recon. Me too. Humanization. Huh? His heart is returning. Doubtless, he'll awaken very soon. Oh, Christopher Lee. Requiesce, Captain Thatcher. Christopher Lee. You made everything more awesome. Roxas, come on! If I was doing it, I probably would have uh, taken one of two different routes with it. See, let's go ahead and speculate on a couple things for a moment. Yes, that was Christopher Lee. That actually was him, not Corey Burton. Um, <clears throat> so, let's just discuss a few things. First of all, morning, Deutsch. Um, second of all, the, uh, like I said, these are data projections. Now, as we'll discuss, and as has been a, a, a theme in every Kingdom Hearts, and will be really, really prevalent in Recoded, and probably in Kai, maybe, um... The, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole concept of what exactly a living being is and the concept of sentience and sapiens, blah, blah, the droid factor. I've referenced the droid factor, the droid equation, several times, so I'm going to finally tell you guys what I'm talking about with that for the five of you who never talked to me, uh, li listen to me talk about the droid equation. The droid equation is droids in Star Wars are not sentient sapient beings to start. When they are first created, they are effectively just robots. However, their programming is sufficiently advanced and sufficiently ca capable and cognizant that the longer they are around, the more they are alive, basically, the more memories they gather, the more experiences they have, they become more and more sentient, more and more sapient, and they basically form their own unique personalities and, and identities and individualities. This is actually one of the reasons why droid memory wiping is a regular thing in Star Wars. And yes, it's pretty much as horrible as I'm, I'm making it sound. They will actually go out and wipe memories of droids, aka of people, to make sure they don't become people. That's their way of dealing with that problem. I'm not going to get into the droid rights argument here, but the point of that idea is a creature that doesn't start sentient or sapient, but can grow into it. I use the droid argument many times uh, across fiction. good example is the Doctor in Star Trek Voyager. 
I've always felt the Doctor did not start off sentient or sapient, but I do strongly believe he grew into it, being online for far longer than he was supposed to be, and having an incredibly complicated and complex programming uh, that allowed him to adapt and learn and grow. <clears throat> uh, ergo, uh, that's the droid argument. So these are data projections that uh, Ansem the Wise has created in a digital world that Ansem the Wise has created uh, specifically for him, for Roxas, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, no kidding, Rackinson. Anyways, um, the point I'm trying to make here is while these people are obviously connected in some way to their originals because they're basically patterned off of the originals and the originals' hearts, the question could obviously be made if these digital projections were allowed to continue to exist for a long enough time, given the complexity of them, would they become sentient sapient beings? Would they generate their own hearts? And given what we learn in Recoded, I'd say absolutely yes. What we're having here is basically a one-to-one -one equation of what happened in Recoded. The only difference was, in Recoded, they didn't really realize what they were doing, and in this game, Diz absolutely knew what he was doing, and deliberately shut down the program early. You notice when we come back here later on, everything's been shut off, there's nobody left other than the base projection itself. By contrast, Mickey and crew just left the projection running because they didn't realize what they were doing. They didn't realize they were basically allowing the sentient and sapient life to be created within their projection of, of Jiminy's journal. You with me? Now, <clears throat> this is uh, it, this is relevant for two big reasons. One, it really showcases the mindset Diz has at this point in time. The fact that he is a bastard. Let's just be honest with it. I, I, I've been trying to think of a better word for that. Uh, but his desire, his uh, perspective, his willingness to do whatever is necessary to get his revenge is a little bit uh, se severe. Uh, I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit, Leander. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the stealing the word thing. There are two ways to uh, interpret stealing the word. The first uh, way to interpret stealing the word is the nobodies just have the power to do that. Remember, we've seen the kind of effect you can have when you unchain someone's memory. That's already happened as of this point in the series. Later on in the series, we will see that you can basically alter people's perceptions of things based on how you react to them. So in other words, it is literally within the realm of possibility that the nobodies stole a word. What is admittedly somewhat more likely is that they stole the very concept of that in the program. They stole the very idea of photos within uh, within this matrix projection and nothing else. Um, <clears throat> now that being said, based on the presentation of the thing, it is actually more likely that they did actually steal the word. And my reason for that is actually really, really simple. Uh... It's no use, uh, is because uh, if it was stealing it just within the projection, it would have been more likely that instead of being incapable of saying the word photo, they uh, actually can't say, they, they try to say it and it's just <clears throat> like there's a little bit of a staticky sound or something like that, indicating a glitch in the system, for lack of a, uh, a better word there. So like I said, both of those are possibilities, and it's kind of up to us uh, to interpret which one it is. A lot of this series is interpretive. So, uh, Diz specifically chose uh, my precious <coughs> Looks like a culprit's going around stealing <coughs> Um The, uh, Diz actually originally had an outpost inside Castle Oblivion, which I find amusing. Um, however, he was having trouble uh, maintaining it, and he really didn't want to keep uh, Sora there because he was afraid they would find Sora. So he journeyed here specifically because they ha it was a... Like, Twilight Town is, is practically an unimportant place to the organization as a whole. Whatever relevance it might have to Roxas, Axel, and Xion. Yes, actually, we are, Takoida. Just one agent, though. So that is Vivi. Yay! That was low, and you know? Fujin and Raijin. 
Not yet. Oh, yeah? Nice comeback there. And Hawaii. Cypher. What'd you say? You can give us back the now. So he at least paused yeah, properly you're there. You're the only ones who would take it, you know? That was undeniable proof that we totally owned you, lamers. So what did you do? Burn it? <laughs> Not that we need some to prove that you're losers. Replay. <laughs> now you're talking. I had a friend who was completely fangirling over Fusion back in the day. Beg, maybe I'll let it slide. <laughs> Which I find amusing. Because there's so little to be uh, interested in in Fusion. <laughs> Roxas! No, I think that's undeniable proof that Cypher doesn't know how to talk. Alright, which one should I pick, guys? Defense, magic, or offense? I'm kidding, of course. Naturally, we're going to go with offense. To my knowledge, this only affects uh, this stat. So, like, we, we basically get a stat up right there. Strength plus one for that. <clears throat> Unlike Kingdom Hearts 1, I don't think that affects our leveling path. I could be wrong. Roxas, focus! Use the force. Oh. <clears throat> yes, I know how to play the game. Thank you. I've played this game many times. Of all the games in the series, I've probably replayed Kingdom Hearts 2 more than the other ones. So I know this game relatively well. Quit playing around and sort fight. of well. Kind of well. I don't know this game at all, guys. This is my first time playing it. Sorry. Neo, loser. We went ahead and went for the beginner dif uh, Deutsch, just to kind of blaze through everything. Which I'm, I'm actually sad about, because I guarantee you I'm not going to have issues with certain fights that I kind of wish I would. But on the other hand... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but on the other hand, I am... It'll make uh, certain other other fights, like the data battles, a little more manageable. So, yeah. Huh. Cypher's not feeling so hot, you know? Tournament decides. I could do that, Samurai. I've even done that on stream before. I've done a no reaction command until Zaldan, if you'll remember. That was the first fight I had to do that? it, and a Kingdom Key <laughs> challenge. So yeah, I think I will do that. At least until I can't anymore. But yeah, I feel like this is actually probably one of the better representations of Cypher, which is funny, because I also think Squall is better in Kingdom Hearts 2 than in basically anything else. Uh, not counting Dissidia. Squall was pretty cool in Dissidia. So, yeah, um, I haven't really, <clears throat> damn it, talked about the, uh, the problem with the triangle command thing yet. And I'll go ahead and explain the problem that I have with the triangle thing in a nutshell. It's not the fact that it makes the game too easy. I mean, it does. <laughs> you, you can basically triangle your way to victory in this game. The thing that bothers me about the triangle thing is I feel it takes away some of the gameplay, you know? It is literally hit a button to do something cool. I would rather do something cool than hit a button to do something cool. I would rather hit seven buttons in the right order to do something cool, you know? Um, Birth by Sleep got that a little bit better. But honestly, and I know this is a weird comparison, but I'm reminded of the Devil May Cry series. I would rather play Devil May Cry 3 where I can chain the attacks in just a way to be cool rather than... You know, I hit R2, or triangle in this case, and cool stuff happens! That being said, having replayed this game many times, the, uh... Oh! The, uh... Triangle thing doesn't bother me as much as it used to. Because if nothing else, it is actually pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so, what we're about to see is the first, and to my knowledge, only time a regular nobody talks in the entire series. Which is interesting because it demonstrates the fact that nobodies can talk. They just usually don't. Oh, wait, wait, can I? Yeah, whatever. Okay, hang on, make sure my camera's right. Yep, camera's right, okay. Yeah, basically, Dakota. But again, it doesn't bother me as much as it used to. We have come for you, my liege. So that line speaks volumes. First of all, again, it's the only time they ever talk ever. 
Second of all, and this is very relevant, it really highlights how Xemnas has been presenting the organization members to the general nobodies. Um, in other words, these regular nobodies think of the, the organization nobodies, the ones who have maintained their semblance of self, their appearance, they had a strong heart before, as literal kings, as, as people who are just, oh my god, these people are completely above and beyond anything that we could ever accomplish. And it's no wonder that they can so easily and so effortlessly command the the uh, the might of these little nobodies. Uh, back before we knew the full details of this game, I actually had two different terms for what we see. I called these things nobodies, because we knew these were nobodies. The guys in the cloaks, a.k.a. the powerful nobodies, I referred to as unknowns, a.k.a. the nobody that has... Uh, the capacity to actually maintain uh, it's, no its semblance of self. What? I suppose uh, another thing that's a good time to talk about here is one of the other ways in what? which uh, what nobodies and Heartless are different. The more powerful a Heartless is, the more monstrous it is, the more huge it is, the more inhuman it looks. It looks like this blah, horrible, disgusting, eldritch creature. I mean, the world of chaos itself is a great example of that. The more powerful a nobody is, the more human they look. The lesser powerful nobodies are the ones who look like this, who look like strange, eldritch creatures that don't really conform to natural law. By contrast, the weaker shadows look like that. The stronger shadows look like the super powerful doom things, and the stronger uh, uh, nobodies look like people, just with minor changes, usually some pointing of the ears, uh, Axel gains the, the red things on his eyes. Uh, you know, very small changes, very minor changes. And so we reclaim the concept of no uh, photos. Excuse me. So here's a question. Do you think uh, Roxas successfully summoned a Keyblade, since he does have the ability, Ventus' heart and all that, or do you think that was gifted to him by someone through the program? Also, bonus question, was that a real Keyblade or a Data Keyblade? Because we know Data Keyblades exist. Data Sora actually uses one for a while until he manages to summon a real Keyblade with a real heart. Which we'll get to later. <sighs> What's this? I was his first customer after he took over the shop. So we took a picture together. It's a really nice photo. Oh! Hey! You just said photo! So, Roxas, yeah, tell yeah. us about the picture <laughs> In my opinion, it is absolutely no denying that it's a data keyblade. Then how do we prove we weren't the ones who took them? <laughs> I mention this because Diz may be kind of a jackass, especially at this point in time. Or I should say Ansem the Wise. But Diz is easier to say, so I'm going to keep saying Diz for a while. Um, but he's not actually evil. He never actually dump, jumps over that final line into evil. Well, he does ruin several lives. He ruins Roxas's life. He effectively helps ruin Shion's life, and he basically was willing to murder Naminé. Um, I don't think Diz ever actually took that final step into evil. He actually has several examples of his, for lack of a better word, true personality shining through, and I think that was one of those occasions where he was just like, okay, here, have a data, have a data keyblade, fight the thing off, you know, whatever. It's a girl. A minor, uh, a minor convenience. Anybody else notice that all the stolen pictures are of Roxas? Oh, so that's why everyone thought it was us. And Cypher didn't go around accusing us after all. Are they really all of me? Yep. See? Look. Right? Every single one. Wouldn't it be weird if the thief wanted to steal the real Roxas or something? <laughs> that would be totally bonkers! Whoops, I didn't mean to hit start there. want to steal a bonehead like Roxas? Oh, thanks. <laughs> yes, Maddie. And Chain of Memories. Man, that would be completely bonkers, guys. <laughs> I love how we're going to have no is dumb moments in the entire first chunk of the game. Roxas is actually pretty smart. 
and he puts the pieces together pretty well. And he's just, I don't know, he's generally more likable than Sora. Not just because of the fact that he's he goes through hell, but he, I don't know, he comes across as a more complete person, Where ironically. am I? Who's there? Who are you? Restoration at 12%. And there's a <clears throat> Ansem. Organization miscreants. They found us. But why would the nobody steal photographs? Both are nothing but data to them. The fools could never tell the difference. We are running out of time. God, he sells that role so well. Namine must make haste. He completely so There's a scene later on, like way later on, in the world that never was, where uh, Ansem the Wise is talking to freaking Mickey, and yet the scene has all the gravitas, all the all the imp all the strength, all the impact, all the 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 significance and seriousness that you'd think it would, because Ansem the Wise perfectly sells it. Notice how he can't say Kyrie's voice or, or name. As long as you continue to wield the Keyblade. By the way, Roxas is proof that we don't need an idiot protagonist. Hey, why don't you come then again, so we is Terra and Aqua and Ventus. Sora. Sora really is unique in his, uh, you find your that. Yeah, I'm back. Name's Goofy. I'm Sora. I'll go with you guys. The Heartless have great fear of the Keyblade. That's right. The Keyblade. Yeah, not all so cloak is of the organization. The, the cloak is simply a tool but that helps protect you from darkness. He found one of the keyholes. Terra is naive, not an idiot. Ventus is naive in a different direction. I talked about that in my rumination. But neither of them are just dumb. Although they, they reflect their personalities and their interactions with the Disney a characters. Keyblade? But I'll talk about that when we get there. Excuse me. For the most part, I like the new music in 2.5. There is basically one exception to that, and it's 13th Dilemma, which is one of my favorite songs of all time, which I feel is much weaker in this version. But I mention it because this song is pretty good, too. Honestly, I've actually, other than the IGN thing, I've never personally known anyone to not like Roxas or this intro sequence. I've heard some people say that it's a little slow and they wish they could skip it, but no one else actually ever heard say, oh, it's terrible. I don't remember it off the top of my head, Samurai. Well, it is literally the same cloaks, Takoita. The same cloaks they use. Thanks. So. Do you guys think we'll always be together like this? Nope. I sure hope so. Huh? Where did that come from? Okay. Uh, well, you know, the jobs. Just oh God. How... Well, I doubt we could be together forever. Foreshadowing. Isn't that what growing up's all about? Foreshadowing. What's important isn't how often we see each other. Foreshadowing. How often we think about each other. Foreshadowing. Right. <laughs> Get that off a fortune cookie? That's it. No more ice cream for you. Also, Wait, this series has a little bit of an obsession with sea salt ice cream. Maybe because of yesterday's memory thief. In one case, it makes perfect sense. You know the rest of the case is it's a little we weird. Want summer vacation to be over. That's all. So, how it's about this? like the this? only thing anyone eats. We all go to the beach. Why do we go to the beach? Because we haven't gone once this entire vacation. Blue seas, blue skies. Let's just get on the train and go. No? Oh, come on. Maybe you forgot, but we're broke. Does anyone Maybe remember forgot, I'm smart. what the benefit is of doing all the jobs to get the money? I don't remember. I did it two weeks ago. Like, you do get something out of it, I just don't remember what. You get a gameplay benefit for getting the, uh, all the monies. Yeah. 
what seriously seriously <laughs> I think I should stand in the light ah 2 AP uh, I'll probably do it then damn it whatever so uh, let's see what's a good thing to talk about while I'm doing it um, hmm. let's talk about the nature of nobodies shall we that's a, this is a good time to talk about that That's not a bug. That's a force tutorial. Yeah, exactly, samurai. Okay, so you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't need. I'm. I'm good on battery. Ah, wireless gaming, the way of the future. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a bit of a grind. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Uh, yeah, mail delivery is is how I do it too. Okay, so nobodies. Let's talk about nobodies. Now, nobodies are actually kind of complicated, as indeed several things that are worth uh, it are. A nobody is what everything that is left over after one has lost one's heart. Um, so the heart goes away, and that takes the heart with it, uh, obviously, So since it is the heart. And it comes consumed by darkness, and it turns into a heartless. You with me so far? Everything that's left, the body, the mind, the memories, all of that Just stays in go. the nobody. You and I have to make the finals. That way, no matter who wins, the four of us split the prize. Okay, you're on. You two are gonna clean up. Go get him. It's a promise. Frickin' Riku. We're all nobody's inside, Elitch Crunch. Uh, how much do I need? 1,200. Yeah, 1,200. We need to get pretzels and watermelon. Hey, Dragoon. Four. Uh, four. Do I need 3,300? Oh, God. So, yeah, we need 3,200. Sorry, I was in the wrong direction. We need 32 frickin' hundred money. Oh, my God. Or is it uh, 1,200? Somebody do me a favor and check the, the number. I don't want to grind more than I have to here. Yeah, I was actually wondering that too. Those are ridiculously expensive. <laughs> I now I actually do have an explanation for that, believe it or not. I personally think that they actually did that deliberately uh, to try uh, that Diz did that deliberately to try and make sure. Yep, we got that one. Uh, to try and make sure that they couldn't go to the beach because he didn't want to render the beach. And so it is twelve hundred. That's what I thought. That's the number that was in my head. See if I remember how to do this. Uh. Ah! Ah, damn it, I screwed up. There we go. Anyways, um... <clears throat> but yeah, I think that it's actually a Diz trying to uh, discourage you from going to the beach. And uh, when that fails, he just flat out gets rid of the... The capacity for them to actually go to the beach. Uh, so we're going to be doing this a few times here. So, yeah. Nobody's. So when the heart leaves, everything that's left behind. Memory, body, mind. Everything except for the natural and the feelings. So theoretically, a nobody would be someone who does not have the ability to feel. Make sense? Um... The, uh, obviously this is actually not true. Now, I've got to be honest with you, you guys. I didn't theorize that nobody's had hearts. That was not my theory. My theories were that nobody's could feel. That they, that they well, it would be more accurate to say that nobody's were people. That were sentient sapient people who deserve to be considered such regardless of their differences. I'll be talking about why Sora pisses me off with that uh, later on. Because he pisses me off with that quite a bit. Oh my god. There we go. Um, but uh, obviously, within this course of the setting, and we find this out in Dream Drop Distance, a nobody will generate a heart thanks to droid effect. Thanks to the fact that over time they will become more and more of an individual. And being an individual uh, in the Kingdom Hearts verse basically means having a heart. Thus, a nobody starts with no heart. Starts as what is effectively an empty shell. A, a echo, a memory, if you will, of the original person. Um, and then... 
they gain a heart as that new individual gains uh, experiences and feelings and all that fun stuff. Because it's so fun. Silver Dragoon. I'm trying to make sure that Nominee has more time here. So anyways, that's the basics of what a nobody is. Now, becoming a nobody grants you significantly more power. Now, this is funny, because technically this is true for becoming a heartless. If you become, uh... If you become a heartless, uh, you actually become much more powerful than you would normally. You gain power over darkness, you gain the ability to do all sorts of horrible things, like use the corridors and whatnot. And all of that, as a result, uh, makes you into a new uh, into a new more powerful being it's just you don't really have a sense of, a sense of self or sentience or sapience because you have no mind and you have no memories so you have nothing to create a new person a new personage if you will out of a heartless I think actually the only exception to that ever and feel free to correct me on this samurai or anybody else uh, of someone who actually ooh, uh, is a heartless who actually had the ability to be a person was Ansem the Wise, and even that is kind of a unique case. Although, I theorize that there's one other exception to that, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, anyways. Uh, theoretically, animals could become heartless in a nobody, yes. So. Uh, theoretically, yes, Leander. Although, obviously, such a thing has not happened. This is relevant, because Xemnas deliberately lied to all of the strong nobodies he recruited for the organization. See, what he wanted, or, to be more accurate, what Xehanort wanted, uh, was for these new nobodies to be vessels for his heart. And he figured it was a perfect plan. All of these people are powerful individuals, powerful bodies, powerful minds, without a heart. So he keeps them without a heart, puts his own heart into them. What are we at? Okay, we're nowhere. Uh, puts his heart into them, and ergo they grant they uh, they uh, they're they're a perfect vessel. There, it's literally like using an empty container to carry something, right? Well, obviously that failed miserably, since virtually everyone in the original organization generated a new heart and relatively quickly. They had enough experiences, enough life to. Uh, to reject that. Uh, yes, so foremost, and here's how the Heartless and, and Nobody thing works. Um, if the Heartless is destroyed, the Heart is freed. If the Nobody is then destroyed, after the Heartless is destroyed, with the Heart already freed, the Heart and Nobody will reconnect at the point at which they were originally severed. But it has to be done in that order, and it has to be... Uh, I've, I've always felt it has to be done under specific circumstances. It's not a cheap, easy way out. Uh, it... it has to work under the right circumstances. And of course, finding a given Heartless, one Heartless amongst the thousands and thousands across all the worlds is insane. I've always felt like one of the things they should have done, or perhaps have done, we don't know, is that some of the characters, uh, some of the original five, should not have reconstituted. Just, be just to emphasize that idea of the fact that actually reconstituting from a Heartless and a Nobody is actually supposed to be, you know, hard to do. It's not supposed to be a cheat death option, at least in my opinion. But, of course, what the hell do I know about cheating, death, writing, or anything like that? Anyways, um, now, uh, there is one other way for a nobody and a heartless to reconvene, and that is if they willingly choose to do so. If a heartless and a nobody, well, <laughs> it's actually more complicated than that, but basically, a nobody can willingly submerge themselves back into their original being under the right circumstances. And actually, there's basically only two circumstances where that one applies. Uh, three, technically, because Shion basically did that, uh, Roxas did that, and Nominate, uh, all of them did that. There we go. Um... Uh, his ice. Oh. Now... I'm going to go ahead and talk about something that's just a, a personal thing as opposed to a more lore thing, so forgive me. But for me, one of the things that irritates me in real life is the idea of... Okay, let's say there's person A, and they are blue. We'll just say, but we'll make this easy. We'll say they're blue. And there's person B, and they're red, okay? Um, I'm grinding money, Kelsman. Um, so, so person A who is blue and person B who is red, they are different from each other. And they are at, 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 in obstacles with each other. They don't like each other. They are prejudiced against each other. Yada, yada, yada. Right? You with me? Um, so, uh, 
Uh, they, uh... <laughs> I was expecting the Mass Effect jokes more than the song jokes, but whatever. Anyways, uh... One of the things that tends to happen in real life and in fiction is... One person will be like, Hey, you know what? You're blue, but I've discovered a secret truth. You actually are originally a red person. You just slowly gain blue skin over the course of, like, some process. So because you're actually red, we're totally cool with each other. That actually irritates the snot out of me, because the idea is you, not that you're different and that's okay, it's you're not different, even though you think you're different, and that's okay. You are similar to me, and therefore I tolerate and accept you. This is one of the things that irritates me about the fact that the nobodies actually generate hearts, as weird as that sounds. Because it means that the nobodies are not people, not because they were people, not because they had sentience or sapience or memories or personalities or anything like that. They're people because they had hearts. Now I know, I know, I know. In Kingdom Hearts it works a little bit differently. But this is also one of the things that really irritates me about Sora. Yes, he's dumb. <laughs> we all get that. However, uh... One of the things that really gets me about Sora is his constant insistence that nobodies are basically monsters. Now, not even basically, are literally monsters because they lack hearts. Therefore, he can totally have no problems killing all of them and destroying them and ruining them because they're different to him. And when he comes up, and, and later on it's like, oh, well, they have hearts. Oh, well, that's okay because they have hearts. No! They were people before you knew that. You. Anyways, my theory of the longest time was that nobody still felt, sort of. They just felt different. They basically didn't interact the same way. My theory was, uh... Yeah, exactly, Samurai. Get off the frickin' thing, Roxas. Um... Yeah, the way he treats Demix in particular always pisses me off every freaking time I see that. It's just, really, Sora? I will explain that when we get there, though, because it does deserve an explanation. It doesn't stop it from pissing me off, it's just... You know, it deserves to be explained. What, what am I adding on? Uh, so... Uh, one, two, three, four, five more, five more. Um... I, the way I always thought of it was... Think of the heart as a method by which one connects to the world around you. One connects to other people. So, ergo, a nobody who has no heart... Still has the capacity to feel... But their feelings are going to be detached, disconnected. They're not going to work quite right. You understand? They're not going to function in the way that they probably should. Uh, this is actually how echoes work in my setting in the Imperium. Echoes do not have hearts in the Kingdom Hearts term. They actually fundamentally lack that connection to the outside world. So they work differently. They feel differently. And not every echo functions the same way. Not every echo, in, you know, changes. And again, this is actually funny because this is actually true for the actual nobodies of the organization. Some of the nobodies are basically the same person as the original. Some of them are different. Some of them are significantly different. Oh, uh, hello, Myron. Myron Jr. Or Myringer. I'm not sure how... Do you want me to say Myron Jr. Jr. or Myringer? Or just Myron? I'm good with, with whatever. <laughs> um, and, of course, it's worth noting that Roxas basically had, uh, had, had a heart to begin with, which completely kind of throws all of this a little bit wonky. As I've said before, though, I've always felt that uh, Roxas was kind of a weird case. Uh... Make, well, okay, let me put it. Let me rewind a little bit. There's basically Myron. You got it. There's basically two ways to interpret Roxas. Roxas is either a nobody or he isn't. Now I know you're like, huh? Bear with me. Two more. In my opinion, either Roxas is a nobody, probably a Ventus, or he's not actually a nobody at all. In in the same sense that Namine isn't quite a nobody. I mean, the two technically qualify, but only. Only if you pull it into it, technically. Um, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but yeah, because of the nature of the Ventus heart situation with Roxas, it's entirely possible that Roxas is a unique being, just how uh, just how Namine was a unique being. This is further emphasized by the fact that that Roxas can wield a Keyblade, and what is a Keyblade? A Keyblade is a weapon of someone's heart. <laughs> Manifested physically, we talked about this. That is exactly why I'm hard on him, Alexander. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, 
okay, 1,200. We're done, we're done. Hey, I got the money. Oh yeah, this is something I do all the time. Because I'm weird. I don't know why. I like the patterning of it, the beat. Uh, yes, you can go and edit your turn. 2 AP. <sighs> Zemnus absolutely knows the nature of Keyblades. Uh, and he would accept Roxas because he needs someone who wields Keyblades no to be second. under his control. To what we started with, we now have... Sweet. We're rich! Except, apparently not. So, yeah. We can't be together forever. So we better make the time we do have something to remember. Huh? Gotcha. Dick. By the way, just, just keep it in your mind for some time. Because we're going to be talking about this literally during the ending. The idea of growing up and uh, losing the people you care about while, uh, while still remembering them. See you around, Dragoon. Whoa. Huh? Uh-huh. Mm. Uh. Huh? And that is, of course, Riku. What? Roxas! Three minutes! Okay. How old Roxas is is kind of debatable. Do you count from the moment of his birth? Because he's like about a year old at that point. Do you count if he's actually an original piece of Ventus? Because he's a We're lot students. older at that Roxas, point. Roxas, the money. Wait. No. Firefall? Huh? Probably not, to Dakota. Remember when I fell? Yay. I had the money before that. Awesome, Myron. I bet that guy took it. Guy? He couldn't have gotten too far. What are you talking about? There was no guy. Huh? But he... There wasn't? Really? Oh, boy. There wasn't anyone there? Actually, there was, but this is a good example of perception filters in, in action here. <sighs> oh, stretch. Oh. In fairness, that was mostly Ansem being a dick to Roxas. It's melting. The ice stone is melting. Cheer up already. Somebody will get that. That was definitely weird, though. Strange. You said it. Unusual. Can you feel Sora? Can you feel Sora? So the way he asks that, there's two ways to interpret what he what Rika is asking. Question is, can you feel, comma, Sora, or can you? feel Sora. Both of those are valid interpretations, but, and this may just be down to the bad voice director, but based on the way Riku actually said the word, can you feel Sora? Sounds like he's asking Sora if he can feel through Roxas. Hurry. No, don't worry. When they that hard to make a beach, we'd be giving the enemy another entry point. And this, we can always buy some sea salt ice cream. <laughs> God, you can hear the bitterness in his voice. Objects from that town must be kept out of the real world. You can delete that.
Hey, not so. <laughs> That's what I've been doing for a few months now. Now, one thing to note here, and this is actually pretty relevant too, they just took something that was digitally projected and brought it out into the real world. And for all intents and purposes, it will continue to function in the real world as a real world object. First of all, the implications of that are staggeringly huge. We're talking something that would literally end concepts like world hunger or poverty because of the fact that you can create something digitally and bring it into the real world. That's insane! But ignoring that, because obviously this is Kingdom Hearts, which doesn't really have the same real world concerns we do, it again is a bit of foreshadowing for that uh, nature of the programming, nature of heart thing, the droid effect that I've already referenced several times. Uh, you have a creature designed, built, created, whatever, inside a programmed area. It is entirely within the realm of feasibility for them to then leave the programmed area. In fact, I was a little surprised Tron didn't actually come out with us. Hey, actress. As the key bearer, you must already know. One must not meddle in the affairs of other worlds. So many places I want to see. I know I'll get there someday. Thus, I do hereby dub the Junior Heroes. Hey, what do you mean, Junior Heroes? You rookies still don't understand what it takes to be a true hero. I... I wish for your freedom, Genie. I like the scenes they choose for the summary of Kingdom Hearts 1. <sighs> Sally, why didn't I listen to you? Don't feel bad, Jack. We'll come up with another plan for Halloween. Next time, we'll do it together. Power! Oh my god, it's Mushu! In case... I Mushu! <laughs> I like how he actually says that, in case you never summoned him like I did. And we're like, who the heck is this guy? Or are you too cool to play them now that you have the Keyblade? Riku? W what are you doing here? Frickin' fell. Did you find her? I still can't believe it. I really flew. Wait till I tell Kyrie. I wonder if she'll believe me. Probably not. No, he still can't say Kyrie. I'm searching too. Which makes sense since that was the most damaged part of his memories. Don't lose sight of it. Was his memories of Kyrie Sora, replaced by the memories where of Nomine. Are you going? I'm gonna go look for my friends. They're waiting for me. Well, where are Donald and Goofy? Instead of worrying about them, you should be asking about her. And there's the Phantom fight. Oh wait. We didn't actually we did defeat Phantom. Who is that person? Ah, she's probably not relevant or important. Kaimine. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, you mean I use a uh, Avermedia internal graphics uh, capture card, not so. Oh god, there's a girl in my room. Girl alert. Girl alert. Oh, okay, she's gone. Whew, we're good. We're good. We're safe. Back to yellow alert, guys. Whew. I like how he has a TV, by the way. It's a nice little touch there. The technology is all over the place in the Kingdom Hearts series in general. Like, all over the place. I do like how each day gets more and more bizarre, if you pay attention. Like, the first day is basically a totally normal day, other than the fact that a concept was stolen. That's the, like, the most normal thing that happens. The next day, you know, it gets weirder, and the next day it gets weirder, and the next day it gets weirder. And so forth and so on. Oh, right, right, station. Right, station. Sorry, wrong. Wrong day. Or wrong way.
Hey. Morning. Yeah, no, that's not weird at all. Huh? Girl alert. Hello, Roxas. Uh, hi. And you are... I wanted to meet you at least once. Me? Yes, you. And now I've met you. Notice Namine is slightly taller here, too. Olette dragged me along to go Because she's grown a year as well. Hey, you want to come with us? Um, uh... Uh, hang on, hey, not so. Did you just see that... Let's see if I can look that up. He's stalling. This may interrupt well, my we'll capture Roxas, to look this okay? up. Y yeah. Did she go to that haunted mansion? I apparently use an Avermedia C027 PCIe. There you go. There's your answer. I'm not repeating it. <laughs> uh, beginner difficulty, Myron. We decided... I decided to just push through it. Otherwise, I'm just going to spend a lot more time grinding. And really, there's no benefit to that. For a lore run, it's always best to push through the gameplay as quick as possible. As much as I hate to say that, it's true. I discovered that over a year ago when I did the, the Final Fantasy Marathon, and I don't feel bad about it anymore. Although I still feel the need to defend it. Found you! I like how Vivi runs away there. So interesting no uh, fact, Roxas here actually wields his weapon differently than Ventus does, which I find very interesting. Die, nobody. You don't belong in this world. You're welcome, Aragos. But yeah, Roxas basically wields his weapon like Sora, which I think is significant. Ventus uses a style of sword fighting I don't remember the name of, but it's the offensive this way, rather than this way. Roxas! Huh? Use the keyblade! <sighs> She's up. Look up. She's right there, dude. So, yeah. Now we go to his dive into the heart. Finally. So, I mentioned uh, back during Kingdom Hearts 1, each dive into the heart is significant, and usually involves a person's heart awakening or otherwise being called to action in some significant way. I also mentioned how the actual uh, objects on the... On the, uh, on the pedestals in the uh, Dive into the Heart were always significant. So one of the things I love about this, this is actually a quiet symbolism here. So we've got a picture of, you see it up there, Riku, Kairi, uh, Goofy, and Donald. And of course Sora's the big one, but all of them are totally awake and functional except for Sora, whose eyes are closed because Sora's still asleep at this point in time, which is a nice little touch there. You can see it a little better right there. Uh, I don't remember what I should do here. I, I should look this up really quick. Hang on. <laughs> uh, what do I look this up under? Um, hang on. Uh, Samurai says shield, but I feel like I don't believe him. I think he's trying to lead me down the path of darkness. What do you guys think? Let's try it this way. Let's see. 
No, that doesn't help. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's try this. Hang on, hang on. Ah, let's try this. Oh, for God's sakes. Where the hell's the chart? I can't find the freaking chart. That's that's a fair point. I am going after the super optionals. Uh, but I don't remember what it does. I don't remember what the difference is. Oh my god. Hang on. I refuse to pick the shield until I am making an informed choice. This is also bothering me that I can't find this information quickly and easily. I mean, you'd think I'd just be like, aha! What? What the hell is Motion Gravure Nemoto Harumi? And why is it on my Kingdom Hearts page? I, you know what? I don't even, I don't even want to know. Uh, here we go. Okay, finally found a freaking list. God. Except Samurai just linked me one too. Um, wow, if you pick Rod, you don't get Lucky Lucky until level 99. That's crazy. Our staff. That's insane. What do we got? Experience boost at level 7, though. If you pick the... Uh, the... Uh, 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 staff. Uh, so, so skin gives, or excuse, excuse me, shield gives you skin, item boost, combo boost, magic lock on, damage drive, experience boost at 17, which isn't too bad. Leaf bracer, a couple things I don't care about, lots of things I don't care about, second chance at 49, lucky lucky at 53, finishing plus at 65, negative combo at 73. Sword, Gets experience boost at nine. Hmm. Look, we get forty-one. With second chance at eighty-five. Interesting. All right. I will now that I have the information. I will adhere to the uh, the donators uh, thing here. Uh, suggestion. Yeah, I don't like the X boost as they work in this or in Birth by Sleep. X Walker, sure, but X boost is just irritating. I M O. So yeah, now we are wielding, at least in my opinion, an actual Keyblade, not a Data Keyblade. Most likely Ventus's own Keyblade. Although it's possible we're actually using Sora's Keyblade, since Sora isn't using it yet, and we aren't so directly connected to Sora at this point in time. Um that we might as well be Sora. I mean, we're literally inside Sora. Uh, go ahead, make your jokes, it's okay. Uh, we're inside Sora and, uh, you know, are directly connected to him as his nobody, sort of. Although, as I've said before, I actually challenge that idea. I do not personally think we actually are uh, Sora's nobody. I think we are Ventus's nobody with a strong connection to Sora for the same reason Ventus is strongly connected to Sora. But that is just my opinion. A game opinion. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I keep doing that. So a little bit of tutorialization here. Um, one thing I find interesting is this is the moment we have the... Uh, the dive into the heart, because obviously this is when we uh, reawaken our ability to use the Keyblade. Hello, Green. Oh, by the way, who is speaking to Roxas here? I personally think it is Ventus again. I, I hate myself for saying that, but it, it really does make the most sense that, once again, Ventus is the one speaking inside of Roxas's heart. I do too, Shadow. Hey, Bregwin. Yeah. 
I don't know why I'm fighting you. So one of the they made one quality of life change in Kingdom Hearts 2 that I really, really, really like. You can open chests and interact with stuff in combat. You guys have no idea how much of a, of a relief that was. There's actually a lot of small quality of life changes in Kingdom Hearts 2 that really uh, are some of the reasons why I feel this game is so vastly superior to Kingdom Hearts 1. Yes, actually, you have green. We have not actually had another Sora is dumb moment yet. We will, though. Do not worry. Oh, we will. Just not for, like, three hours, because we're Roxas right now. And, of course, unlike, uh, the Sora's internal fears and worries and all that turning into a dark side, Ventus' turns into a Twilight Thorn. Interesting fact, unlike the dark side, this is the only Twilight Thorn basically ever. Which is a bit of a shame, because he looks really cool. And the music should, like, already be playing. Oh, there it goes. I love this song right here, by the way. This song was stuck in my head for weeks and weeks. So now time to fight the Triangle Button Boss with extra... See, I think part of my complaints uh, that I already mentioned about the Triangle Button is it has nothing to do with timing or scale or rhythm or anything like that. You can pretty much just mass triangle and be fine with it. There are some other uh, triangle interactions that you can't do that on, but this is not one of them. Most of them are not one of them. You can just mash triangle and it'll work. So I have a theory about the Twilight Thorn. I think the Twilight Thorn is actually representative of the Roxas. Like, it basically is Roxas, the unique individual Roxas. I do love this fight. It, it has a lot of cool factor to it, let's be honest with ourselves. Anyways, I feel like that is representative of all of the anger and rage and violation and all the crap that Roxas went through during 358 quite literally manifested into a massive nobody uh, that he is now trying to defeat without any memory of any of these events, if that makes any kind of sense. That, that's just the way I think it is. Okay, fine. Limit form what? No, I'm not referring to anything about limit form. Oh my god! So I have one big complaint about Kingdom Hearts 2 as uh, combat early on. And it only functions early on. Uh, early on, um, there's no recovery option. Um, in other words, if you get hit, you just are stuck in this falling back animation until you hit the ground. And god, that gets old. But yeah, I absolutely love the thorns that are representative of the nobody. And of nothingness in general. Uh, well, considering one person did shadow, I'd say yes. But anyways, yeah, I do, uh, I do think this is basically, uh, the closest thing to the real Roxas, if that makes any sense. The original Roxas, the new being Roxas. That's just my take on what the Twilight Thorn is. It could, of course, just be something much more metaphysical, or not metaphysical, excuse me, much more metaphoric than that. I guess that would be metaphysical. I love how they made magic in general more useful in, in Kingdom Hearts 2.
Why, Samurai? I never have before. Not killing so much as defeating Takoda. To help awaken yourself. Although, actually, if I could be blunt, I think the reason we faced the Twilight Thorn there was the Twilight Thorn, if it is our original self, was trying to reawaken itself out of the this Roxas, which is basically not a different person so much as the same person, but with his memories completely locked away. In other words, you could also argue that Twilight Thorn is just the real full Roxas, all of our memories, trying, or literally just is our memories trying to reawaken, trying to emerge. And because we defeat the Twilight Thorn, our memories do not actually awaken here. Besides, who needs guard when you have reflect? <laughs> My name is Nominate. Roxas, do you remember your true name? Say no more, Naminé. But if no one tells him, Roxas will... It's best he doesn't know the truth. Hey, you're that pickpocket! <laughs> I like this. Huh? Hey, look! It's a distraction. This is so Riku. Whoa. In you go. Um... Personally, Darkrai, since we literally have no idea how much time has passed between uh, Dream Drop Distance and 3, it could be any number of times, but I would imagine no more than a Cypher, year at most. Strike a pose, you know? How's this? That's totally perfect, you know? How about one more, you know? What's that for? Keepsake. Those freaks in the white jumpsuits are gone, you know? Cakewalk. What are Cakewalk. Those things? Outsiders, that's what. And if they don't wise up to the rules around here, I might have to take disciplinary measures. Oh yeah, Cypher's always looking after the town, you know? Chicken and out of the tournament tomorrow. We'll be waiting, you know. We will be waiting, you know. And Lord knows I have my own verbal tics, but man. Oh my god. So, you hung out with Cypher's gang today? N no, it, it's not like that. Oh, yeah. How was the beach? Wasn't that today? We didn't go. It wouldn't be the same without you, right? Sorry. Hey, how about we go tomorrow? We could get those pretzels and... I promised I'd be somewhere. Oh. Hey, oh. you remember this scene that literally happened like five minutes ago? Let's do a flashback to it. <laughs> You and I have to make the finals. That way, no matter who wins, the four of us split the prize. Okay, you're on. You two are gonna clean up. Go get him. It's a promise. I'm out of here. Restoration at 48%. Was that Nomine made of data? No. Nomine hijacked the data herself. Look what she's done now. She's totally beyond my control. Calm down. It doesn't matter. As long as Namine accomplishes her goal, we needn't worry about what befalls Roxas. Well, 
Don't mind me, I'm just coughing the crap out of myself over here. It's up to me. Only the Keyblade Master can open the secret door <coughs> and change the world. Damn it! Well, I'm not gonna betray Sora either. My friends are my power. So, your heart won this battle. I like how the Xemnas fight is this net list, by the way. And so. Lead me into everlasting darkness! Sora! Forget it! There's no way you're taking Kyrie's heart! Uh, so, a really quick thing, before I forget. I, uh, uh, when I went to fight uh, Xemnas two weeks ago when I was first playing this, uh, I went to fight him pretty much right before the Riku fight. I, like, I was looking around for it and I couldn't find it. I'm like, what the hell? Because that's when the fight happens in story, before you go fight uh, Ansem as Riku. And he wasn't there. And I, it, it took me a while to find out that you couldn't go there until all the way after the end of the game. Now, I actually went all the way to the last save and then went to go fight Xemnas. But uh, <clears throat> uh, that leads me to another. I should start writing down the things I want to talk about so I don't forget about them. Because I've already thought of two things that I haven't talked about yet that I want to... Talk about really quick here. Mm. Kyrie. <sighs> we may never meet again, but we'll never forget each other. No matter where we are, ah! our hearts will bring us together again. Take this. It's my lucky charm. Be sure to bring it back to me. Don't worry. I will. Promise? Don't ever forget. Wherever you go, I'm always with you. Oh my god. My body's just like, ah, I'm gonna kill you today, Arsh. <laughs> For the record, I do believe what we are seeing is literally what Roxas is seeing in his dreams. <sighs> Promise. Funny fact, by the way. What a mess. Um, given what we find out later, it's funny that Sora's memories were so incomplete until Roxas was returned to them. It makes sense, though. Basically, Namine spent the better part of a year trying to recombine his memories into a decent piece, and it was basically failing miserably, because all those memories were seeping into Shion and into Roxas. And so it's not until Roxas is returned to the equation that those memories start going back into, uh... Back into, uh... Uh, Sora. And actually, it's funny you say that, Samurai, because that is one of the two things I just wrote down. This is also something that is interesting. Roxas is the kid we just saw, Fuke. So, uh... Struggle! Um, so... What we're about to see is sub subtlety and subterfuge on the behalf of the nobodies. Now that's actually very relevant. I'm just going to pause this so I can talk without interruption. Um, this is this really helps highlight the difference between nobodies and uh, and heartless. Heartless are basically animals. They're beasts. They can't think. They can't work. They can't you know adapt or learn any more than well a base animal can. An unintentional animal. Please don't bring up the the the, the strawman argument of animals are super smart. That's not what I'm talking about. They're basically just beasts. Okay. So all they can do is, ba is work functionally uh, based on their instincts. The nobodies, however, are entirely mind, memory, and body. Ergo, they have the ability to think through a situation. They have the ability to adapt to a situation. And I love that how that's represented here, because the nobodies have literally tried stealing information on Roxas, then they tried stealing Roxas himself, and now... Who will be the one to break through they'll be trying their third method to get a hold of Roxas. Who will lead to 
today as our new struggle champion. Gainer Roxas. Oh my god. Guys, I just realized there are more people here cheering for this struggle match than there are in the Olympus Coliseum. Also, Setzer, who looks really cool here. If we ever see Setzer in a 3D game, I hope he looks kind of like that, because that is a really cool appearance for Setzer. And it looks a lot like it. I mean, it's immediately identifiable. It's time to introduce today's combatants. The four bad boys who struggled their way through the preliminaries. Regular finalist and head of the Twilight Disciplinary Committee, Cypher. Completely out of nowhere. Who knew he'd make it so far this year? Vivi. Vivi. An underground favorite and local attitude problem. Hainer. It's his first trip to the finals. And struggler number four, who happens to be my absolute favorite customer, Roxas! I am Twilight Struggle Announcer, and this is my favorite contestant in the struggle. struggle. Sorry. Who will take home the grand prize? The summa cum laude of struggle, the four crystal trophy! And a chance to take on our defending champion, Setzer! I like the scars, especially. It won't be long now, folks. I suggest our challengers go over the official struggle rules before we begin. Join us, Case No. Join us. I like Vivi's hat design, too. So only one of these you have to really... Oh, two of these, excuse me. You have to actually fight. You can, uh... I feel like that is wrong. Oh my god! Shut up or die. There we go. Okay, uh... Oh, there we go. That's much better. Okay, camera's fixed. Why not what, Deutsch? Sorry. <laughs> what did I say? Fine. Let's hear the rules of the game. I already know. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and talk about Twilight Town now. Oh, gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> I swear, I'm just having a hard hard time paying attention to things lately. <sighs> I'm ready. Not really, Takuda. You'll see what's going on with Vivi. Um, they explain it. And I will explain it too. Uh, we actually already have a Keyblade at this point, Green, so it's not really a big deal. But hey, we have a sorry our own keyblade. What? You still worried about that? Come on. I need to let that stuff go. Seriously. I got a lot on my mind. Sorry, man. Wait, what am I sorry for? Our first match of today's struggle tournament will be between Roxas and his best friend, Hainer. <clears throat> Twilight Town. So, what is Twilight Town? This we've never actually had a definitive answer for this, and there's basically two. Uh... So I know how to play Struggle. God, there's two. Uh... There's two general ideas for what uh, Twilight Town is that I've ever heard as explanations, um, and I've heard a few variants on these two ideas, but it's all basically bo boils down to those same two ideas. Idea number one. Twilight Town is fully a realm in between world. It is a place that is simply innate to the realm in between. And this is actually an idea I kind of like because it once again emphasizes how uh, the realm in between is basically better off than everywhere else. Because Twilight Town is effectively a, a, a natural radiant garden. It's a place with no major issues, no crime, no monsters or beasts, no horrible dangers from beyond, no great villains trying to mess things up. It is, in other words, a much more balanced uh, world than the places that we see in the Realm of Light. You with me? I should probably stop trying to show off so much. <clears throat> um, that's the first idea. This is just a world from the Realm in between. Damn it, I was hoping to completely curb stomp him. Oh well. Um, 
Now, we know that Twilight Town literally is in the absolute uh, in-between. And the winner is... Unlike Traverse Town and Castle Oblivion and the world that never was, this is absolutely in the middle, so to speak, right? I lost. So. I can't believe it. Correct, Dakota. This is a real place. I guess I taught you well. Shut up, Hayner. I had a lot of fun fighting you. No, no, no. You said that wrong. I had a lot of fun beating you. Yeah, well, I didn't, wise guy. Hey, let's find a way to cheer you up. Nah, that's all right. Out of the way. You in a rush to lose? Oh, no, there's plenty more to them that we, that we don't see, Green. Dream Drop Distance really helps emphasize uh, how much more there is. <laughs> wow, Vivi's laugh is super creepy. Oh, well. Anyways, the other big theory I've heard about Twilight Town is that this is basically another uh, aspect of the Traverse Town thing. Now, that was a theory I gave you guys, although it's a very, very strong theory. There's a lot of evidence backing it up. There's virtually no evidence backing up the, uh, the Twilight Town theory. Here's the theory. You ready for this? The idea is that Twilight Town is a place where people ended up uh, after things happened to them, which I'll cover in a second, and after those things happened to them, they made a place like Traverse Town. It's just Twilight Town has been around for longer than Traverse Town. In other words, Traverse Town has only been around since the crisis beginning in Kingdom Hearts, uh, just before beginning, beginning, blah, blah. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble talking. The crisis that began just before Kingdom Hearts 1, with the worlds disappearing and the heartless spreading and Maleficent's effect, that's when Travis Town first started being constructed by the people who ended up there uh, as a result of their worlds being destroyed. The idea is that Twilight Town has been around basically since the beginning. Any time any world has issues, or anyone gets lost in darkness, or anyone gets lost in light, or anyone just gets lost in general throughout the course of this realm, they end up here. And therefore, Twilight Town is just a much more long-term version of Traverse Town. An established nation, if you will, as opposed to a recently built city. If you kind of see the difference between the two. Uh, the other way that this I like this theory is because part of the idea is that all the people here are nobodies. Hear me out. Because the now uh, the idea here is that these people were nobodies, ended up here, and interacted with each other and worked with each other and talked with each other and slowly grew hearts, as you do. And these nobodies were lesser nobodies, little nobodies, not really worthy of... Uh, not really worthy of attention by Zemnus or anybody else who would manipulate them. And so they generated hearts and became normal people. You see the idea there? Now, I'm not sure which one of these two major theories is true, or if indeed neither of them is true. Both of them have some very strong points in favor of them as far as feasibility. Um, if I were to actually pick one <clears throat> as far as which one I think is more likely, uh, I actually do think the former idea is more likely, that this is literally a normal in-between town. This is just a world that exists in the in-between, uh, just like worlds exist in the light. Uh, again, the tranquility, the, the, the calm, the balance that the whole place emphasizes. I mean, if you actually look at the place, it literally, if you bisect it down the middle, uh, it mirrors itself design-wise. So even that uh, <clears throat> indicates that. But both theories are perfectly feasible. What do you think about it? Excuse me. Uh, also, there are technically multiple Twilight Towns, but not really. Basically, the one we're in right now is a digital projection of the real Twilight Town. But there is a real Twilight Town. Uh, we're just not there yet. I, I'm not sure what just happened. Um, but the winner is BB. Yay! A blistering comeback. BB. I suppose it could be both. This could be a place from the in-between, and some of these people are no- or were nobodies. Alright guys, now for the only fight we basically have to win. We don't actually have to beat Setzer. We're going to. Vivi's harder than Setzer anyways. <laughs> Which makes sense. It looks like Cypher's withdrawn from the struggle for third place. So I'm in third now? Oh, baby! <laughs> That's true. Kingdom Hearts 2 has objectively proven that a data projection of Vivi is stronger than a data projection of Cypher. Oops. 
There we go. That's true. Fusion really does have that emotionless thing going on for her. And if you notice, a lot of the people here tend to be a little fixated on a particular thing, which uh, is kind of representative of how uh, nobodies in general tend to work. <clears throat> yes, I am in third and last! <laughs> yeah, I agree. Setzer's a really awesome character. This doesn't really showcase him that well, character-wise. Although personality, or not personality, visual-wise, I do think this is a very cool-looking Setzer. Roxas versus Phoebe! <sighs> Cypher has one cool scene in Kingdom Hearts 2. Which is funny, because again, it's not actually Cypher. God, I keep hitting Y to, uh... to, you know, dodge roll. Welcome back, Naminé. It's time to kill you soon. In about another two hours, I'd say. Unfortunately. That's a shirt. Although we don't know what his face looks like. And we never will. Ah, damn it. That was a good example of the can't recover thing that I just talked about, by the way. I had no choice but to continue to plummet until I actually hit the ground. Yes, Bivivi's bat is being magically augmented to become larger to increase his attack radius. He does it on basically every attack he does. I agree, actually, Samurai. The Black Mages from FF9... Did you really nominate? Wow. Um, <clears throat> the nature of Black Mages in FF9 specifically, the Golem creatures, and nobodies are actually astonishingly similar. Think about the concept of the uh, the black mages when they wake up, you know, and when they become, you know, they realize who they are, and they basically, for all intents and purposes, grow a heart. Uh, compared to the nobodies and everything I've already said about them. So, big spoiler alert: it was never VV. Dun dun dun. It was a nobody. Just a dusk, though. Again? So, like I said, the nobodies are getting smarter. Again? And are figuring. Uh, and are getting uh, more. Uh, adding a little more cunning to their attempts to reclaim Roxas. Fun fact. On the one hand, they're trying to reclaim Roxas, because, you know, they're using and manipulating him. On the other hand, I imagine these Dusks, given their nature, are probably actually just trying to uh, rescue Roxas, since they perceive him as being kidnapped, which is ironically absolutely true. It's one of those funny situations, because, you know, he has been kidnapped against his will, and is being held by someone who oh, wishes him ill. Someone who wants to hurt him. Uh, Anson. However, uh... Also, you know, Broxus was already leaving the organization, so... <laughs> and, of course, they stalled him enough for someone else to find a way in. And, of course, they send their top agent in. Well, they're one of their top agents, I should say. Roxas, all right. Fight, fight, fight. You really don't remember. It's me. You know, Axel. Notice he talks differently Axel. here, because it's been a year and a lot has happened. Blank with a capital B. Like a lot man, has changed. Oh Even the dusks aren't gonna crack this. Way. Wait a sec. Tell me what's going on. This town is his creation, right? Which means we don't have time for a Q&A. You're coming with me, conscious or not. Then you'll hear the story. Yeah, like I said, this is Axel who has a heart at this point in time, who has become his own person. Uh-oh. Ah. 
Because it works better this way, Shuri. In my opinion, of course. What's going on? Everything about 2 is spoiled by 358, <gasps> and everything about uh, 358 is it explains 2. Number 13. Roxas. The Keyblade's chosen one. Okay, fine. You asked for it. It's actually not that hard, Three Wishes. All you need to know is know where it is. The corridors of darkness can go basically anywhere. In actual fact, uh, one of the implications of how they, uh, Ansem keeps, uh, one of the implications that is mentioned several times is that, uh, Ansem basically keeps moving where the Matrix is, for lack of a better term, so that they have a harder time figuring out how to get back in. But of course, he can only do that so many times, which is why throughout the course of the rest of this section, the nobodies will be having more and more of a presence. Uh, throughout the uh, throughout the section, because they're getting in easier and easier now that they've found their way in. Make sense? Uh, those are chakras. Cube. Oh, Roxas. Sorry, Roxas is using a keyblade. I thought you meant Axel for some reason. There's Ansem. So it was you. Oh yeah, so yes, those are chakrams. Roxas! This man speaks nonsense. Roxas! Don't let him deceive you! Roxas! 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 So again, Ansem is just distracting him long enough in order to move the matrix here, the data projection, and reset it. And then reset the system. What? What just happened? I also find it real. Okay, so this is the real Vivi, sort of. How did I get here? I like his voice actor. I hope we get that voice actor for Vivi in the FF9 proper remake what? that they're totally making, right? Right? Oh god. Anyways. Um. What was I saying? It would change the entrance points to Koida and shove anything that was external out of it, which is actually what exactly just happened. Vivi's like four. <laughs> or younger, depending on how you define that. Anyways, um, one thing I find interesting is that I've always felt that uh, Axel's... Um, Axel's comment there of, you know, oh god, Roxas, don't let him deceive you, you know. As, of course, we know Axel cares about Roxas. We also know that Axel's kind of being thrown up against a wall by Xemnas here. But, uh... Yeah, it's actually, uh... Pretty likely that there's some genuine caring on behalf of Axel. And by pretty likely, I mean absolutely 100% guaranteed. For the PS7. Um, well, Titans, basically, Axel is being uh, strong armed into working for the organization at this point. There's only room for one up here. I love Sensor's hair. May the best man win. Sorry, but I do. Uh, yes, they do know it's still there, Zero Hunter. How about you throw the match for me? Focus! You're not listening to Koida. They would still have to lock onto him again and get to him again. It's a time. He's buying time. Ansem is literally buying time. There is no way, now that they've found Roxas, to keep the organization out permanently. It is literally impossible. The entire goal in moving uh, Roxas to this dig digital projection was to hide him for as long as possible. Once they find him again, it's over. They're not going to be able to keep him hidden uh, anymore. Especially now that they know uh, that they're at the Twilight Town. Sorry, Setzer. I love you, boy, but no. This is completely out of character, Green. It's also worth noting, not only is this not Setzer, it's also not Setzer. 
In other words, this is not only not the FF6 sensor, but then again, none of them are the original characters, as we've already talked about. But this is a digital projection of sensor. So this is the kingdom. This is a digital projection of the Kingdom Hearts sensor. A fake of a fake, if you will. I'm super scared, Setzer. All right, you got this, Setzer. Oh my God! Wow, you actually hit me. You hit me! How dare you! You monster! You bastard! I will destroy you! No mercy for the conquered! How dare you exist! Sorry, anyways. Yes, Vivi was a fake of a fake of a fake. <laughs> Yeah, Setzer's actually super easy. He really is. I like the purple eyes, though. Mario! Mario! Mar We went straight from Chain of Memories to this, yes, Titans. As we should. Yeah, I got equipment. That doesn't actually matter. But I'll have it equipped for a while. I usually go really light on equipment in Kingdom Hearts 2. Pretty much until I get the endgame crafting stuff. So usually I'm like over three quarters of the way through the game and I've still got the struggle belt on because I just haven't gotten any other equipment. That's my normal approach. Rocks, this rocks, this rocks, this rocks, this rocks. I like his method of sharing the trophy, by the way. Snap. That would have been very cool, sure you. Alright, time to go to the beach. But first, let's plummet to our death. As promised. Thanks a ton, Roxas. <laughs> One more treasure for us to share. And then it'll go on a shelf and never be looked at again. I've got a present too, for all of us. Whoa. Oh, oh my god, no! And we're dead. End of game, guys. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Green. That's probably the etchings of the hard thing I talked about before. So this is actually Kyrie. This is not a digital projection. This is not a memory thing. This is Kyrie on Destiny Islands. Now, I mentioned, I keep calling it Destiny Islands because A, it is. But B, we only ever saw in Kingdom Hearts 1 the one little island. Also, I love the, the, the Moogle purse there that Selfie has. You can, you can kind of see the rest of the island in the background here. Not today. Sorry. There. Okay, I just want to showcase this. I know it's kind of covered by the thing. But you can see big old mountain, actual uh, a city in the distance there. There's also more city going up in that distance direction, partially hidden by the things. I just mentioned it because this is the first time ever, actually, uh, we see the entirety of the of the mainland, basically, of, uh, of, the, of Destiny Islands. By the way, I've been saving this until this moment. Uh, this is probably not true. But I've heard a, a theory a lot. And that theory is that Destiny Islands is Japan. <sighs> I don't like that theory because I get sick of it. I have seen too many games and animes and, and, and well, mangas, and that's basically it, where, oh my god, it was actually Japan all along. I mean, FF13 even did that, for God's sakes. I really get sick of that. Drakengard, another good example of something where it's just like, oh, Really? Um, I get sick of it, and that's the main reason I don't like it, but Mount Fuji, the clothing style, the island, yada, yada, yada. It would make sense, and I don't like it. Moving on. Aww, why not? Do you remember those boys who used to hang out with us? Riku? Yeah. I wonder whatever happened to She him. said boys, plural. He's far away. But I know we'll see him again. 
Sure. Of course we will. Although again. And the other boy? What other boy? The one who was with Riku and me all the time. We played together on that island. His voice always used to be there. Now it's gone. And there you can actually see the island in the distance. Name. I feel awful about it. So I told myself. I'm not going to the island until I remember everything about him. Are you sure you didn't make him up? Dominic? So now Roxas gets accidentally connected to Kyrie here. The real Kyrie, obviously. Namine, what's happening to me? Who are you? And that's not my name. I'm Kyrie. Kyrie, I know you. You're that girl he likes. Who? Please, a name. I'm Roxas. Okay, Roxas. But can you tell me his name? She's <laughs> dick. You don't remember my name? Thanks a lot, Kyrie. Huh? Okay, I guess I can give you a hint. Starts with an S. My overall point is I hope Destiny Islands is not a real world place at all. That's just my take on that. I've already given my theories on Destiny Islands, really. So yeah, Kyrie's knocked unconscious by accidentally being connected to Roxas, which also connects her to Sora. Are you okay? I, I, it's kind of a shame, because she's been trying to remember Sora for some time. Again, etchings of the heart, once again. She, the etchings of Sora are here, but she has no memories of Sora. It just doesn't really function right. Um... So she's been like, uh, and then she finally connects to someone who's like, oh, you, 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 you know something about the boy. And you notice she immediately recognizes the connection between Roxas and Sora, just as he automatically recognizes the connection between her and Namine. In fact, he assumes she is Namine at first. Um, Sephiroth. <laughs> Kyrie and Sephiroth. Let's not think about that anymore. Um, but then, of course, she's like, ah, ah. Selfie's like, what? Also, the big shoes thing is toned down a bit more in Kingdom Hearts 2. So I kind of like the aesthetic a bit better. That's a good point. Sonic's already been with a human. And we will never mention it again. I like how she had this letter already prepared, by the way. What's that? It speaks to how long she's been trying to remember Sora. I wrote it yesterday. To the boy I can't remember. Of course she wrote it I yesterday, no so never mind. Is, I'll find him. One day. And when I stopped writing, I remember we made a promise. Something important. This letter is where it starts, I know it. Wow. I hope he gets it. He will. It'll just take a while. Like the Starts entire game. S. Right? Sora? I like how she says that name. It's so unnatural, but it makes sense. Because she's trying to remember his name. So she says it wrong because she's still trying to figure it out. She says his name just fine later, so you can tell it's just there. She's like, Sora? Like she's trying to shove his name out through her memory. And of course, she can only remember his name because of the connections being reattached in him. His progress is astounding. So, what happened? Namine's encounter with Roxas put his heart in contact with Kairi's. And that, in turn, affected Sora. You see? Namine. Basically, yes, Duke. 
Like, we're doing a marathon right now of Kingdom Hearts, to use an example of that. ...wasn't born like other nobodies. She can interfere with the hearts and memories of Sora and those aligned with him. But who's nobody is she? I could tell you. <laughs> but first, perhaps you could tell me your true name. All right, this scene is a little bit wonky. Remember, Diz has been interacting with Riku since forever. Riku did not turn into this Ansem pseudo form until actually very recently. Basically, like, the day before Kingdom Hearts 2 started. So he's only been in this form for, like, three or four days, or however long we're at at this point. I think it's, like, four days. Um, a very short period of time, in other words. So why would Ansem the Wise ask someone he clearly knows is Riku... You know, what is your true name? Why bother even asking that? I, I only have a small theory. Because let, let's, let's go ahead and get out the real reason why he asks that. The real reason he asks that is so that this big reveal is to make us think, Oh my god, it's Ansem the Seeker of Darkness. Um, I actually know two people personally, I'm, I am not one of them unfortunately, who actually thought that this was Ansem the Seeker of Darkness, not Riku the entire time. That something had happened in the year in between Chain of Memories and 2, and Ansem the Seeker of Darkness had started to turn around and try to make, uh, make penance, or repent for his actions and was trying to do some good. Um... So that's the that's the out of character reason why he why this scene exists. The in character reason is a little bit different and a little bit more mundane. The idea here is that Ansem is like, look, Riku, I know that you're Riku. Why are you looking like that now? And basically, Ansem is either a trying to determine if uh, Ant the the Isod has taken over Riku, which was always a threat if you remember back in Chain of Memories, or b. If, this, if Riku has basically started identifying himself separately. And Ansem himself will explain his reaction here later on. It's Ansem. And of course, <laughs> Ansem would laugh at that. It's an honor, Ansem. Not just because it is funny but to hide his own shame, to use his own words. Yeah, it's four to five days. I we don't know the exact time, but it has not been long. So we're about to see how Axel is basically being coerced into doing what he's been doing no here. Way. It's too soon. You can't seriously get rid of him. It's an order. Why do you hesitate? Salden. You who has been ruthless towards those who turned their backs on the organization. But it's not like that. He didn't betray us. He can't come back. If he doesn't return, you know what you must do. Or you will face the consequences. So this is interesting to me. Axel, he actually chops off some of Axel's hair with that attack. But Axel, it doesn't even flinch at Zaldan. I personally think a Axel could defeat Zaldan. Xemnas, on the other hand, is someone who actually makes him more afraid. Because Xemnas is now threatening him with the one thing they all fear so most. Turn me into a dusk. Being reverted. Alright, I'll do it, if that's what you want. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed the, they, they reveal their hoods in order of them being revealed in the story. Uh, which is funny because later on we'll see that they take their hoods off all the time. Uh, darkness can give a fairly large amount of power, but ironically darkness can give a degree of shape-shifting power. Actually, Ansem the Wise himself is using that shape-shifting aspect of power to hide his identity. Dreaming. But which parts were the dream? Hey, Case, now, sorry. Uh, a nobody can exist while the original can exist. A nobody can replace the original, but only under very special circumstances. For the most part, the original cannot exist when the nobody exists because the original is destroyed and split into two. And I shouldn't say destroyed, but basically just split into two. So, there is no original. 
for all intents and purposes, the nobody is the original in every way that fun functionally matters. The nobody is the original person. For so, for example, to, to use a weird parallel here, if I were to walk up to you, Fuke, and rip your heart out, Kalima, Kalima. If I was to rip your heart out right now, um, you, the the person that you are, would go on. You would just be a nobody. Uh, either if your heart was strong enough as an unknown, or just a regular nobody like a Dusk or whatever. Excuse me. The Heartless over here would effectively be a separate thing, and not really actually have a, an, an individual uh, personality or whatnot. Now, I mention this because this is really important, if I can explain for just a moment. Um, <laughs> congrats, Myron. Uh, if I can explain, if you were cloned, Perfectly and exactly, you would still be the original. And I know this is hard to explain because it's, it's, we get into some weird stuff. But the idea here is the personality that you are would keep going as the original person. The clone would keep going thinking they're the original person, but they are a separate person. Now, if the original person was then killed, you are dead. The, the, the clone may think they're you. They may feel like they're you, but the you that you are, from your perspective, from your internal side perspective and, and thoughts and whatnot, you're dead. You die. So in other words, for example, if someone were to offer you eternal life through cloning, the answer you should give is no, because I'll die, right? However, if someone were to offer you that through becoming a nobody, that's different because you will keep going on, because you will go on as the nobody. Make sense? So the original person is in every way in the nobody. They are still continuing through that new personality. There are only a few separate circumstances where the memories of the original do not carry forward, and all of those are unique circumstances. All of these are unique uh, 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 cases, like with Roxas, Shion, uh, Namine, and actually that's basically it. Um, Yes, Takoida, that is exactly correct. Uh, there has only been one exception where the Heartless that was ripped out remembered the original, and that was due to the unique way in which uh, Ansem the Seeker of Darkness became a, became a Heartless. Um, it is also arguable that because of the Terra and Ericus situation that that's part of why Zemnis... Uh, twisted off and in, in many ways became his own being completely separate from Xehanort, uh, even though technically he would be the original Xehanort. For all intents and purposes, the original Xehanort went on in Ansem the Seeker of Darkness, whereas Xemnas really does feel in many ways like his own person, because, and this is just my theory, Xemnas goes on with, but Xemnas goes on with the hearts of Terra and with the hearts of Ericus and with all that memories and thoughts of three separate people jumbled and mixed up into into the new being that is Zemnus, making him the twisted, distorted, unbalanced person that he is. Whereas the original Xehanort goes on into the Heartless. This has always been my theory of, of, of distinguishing the two. Um, it, it, it's, it's a deliberate naming scheme, I think, Green. Now, we're pretty sure that Zemnus does remember most of the things from, at least some of the things from his original Xehanort, because he is perpetuating the original Xehanort's plans. By the way, to make something clear, I mentioned this earlier, when I say the word Xehanort, I mean Master Xehanort. Okay? Just, I don't like saying Master Xehanort each time, so Xehanort equals Leonard Nimoy. Let's just make that clear, okay? Um, so Xemnas does obviously remember at least some of Xehanort's original plans because he is still moving forward through several of them. However, um, he is also very clearly kind of doing his own thing, far more than Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, was over here, Xehanort's Heartless. So that's why I say that Xehanort's Heartless is clearly the original Xehanort, especially given the time-traveling thing, whereas Xemnas is his own thing. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain the time-traveling thing really quick, just to get my point across here. Um, I'll talk about the branding thing uh, later, I think, because we actually see a branding happening uh, in, in this area, I think, in Final Mix, actually. Yes, Terranort is sort of a different being from Xehanort. Um, sort of. Basically, Terranort... Uh, okay, t ask me again about Terranort in just a second. So, the point of evidence. Okay, so here over here we've got Xehanort Tartless. Over here we've got Xemnas. Okay, let's move Xemnas out of the way for a second. Xehanort Tartless goes on, and one of the very first things he does... I mean, literally, the first thing he does is he completely gets rid of his body 
becomes what is effectively a spirit and gains the ability to travel through time as a result. He immediately goes back to his younger self and manipulates his younger self into causing the events of his life to happen and, and gives his younger self the knowledge of time travel. Because Xehanort, the individual, has already sacrificed his body to travel through time, young Xehanort can travel through time with his body and therefore actually do things through time travel. This is how Xehanort gets around that loophole in time travel, because normally time travel is meaningless. All time travel is worth normally is viewing time, except even that is pointless because then you forget everything that happened during the time travel. Those are the two consequences of time travel in Kingdom Hearts. You cannot do it with your body, so you can't interact with anything, and you, uh, and you lose all memory of the events that happened while you're traveling through time. So once you revert to where you started from, it's all gone. So uh, he uses this to get rid of that, to get around both of those problems, which I'll talk more in depth about when we get to Dream Drop Distance. Returns to the present, and now he has no body. Uh, but I mentioned this, and I mentioned this as as significant for the fact that uh, Xehanort's Heartless is, in many ways, the original Xehanort in a way that nobody usually is, because all of that was Xehanort's plan from the beginning. If that was his plan from the very beginning. He, Xehanort's Heartless obviously remembers all of that because he was willing to actually go through with that. And he was willing to actually complete that plan and then go forward with his normal plans. He wouldn't have been willing and capable of doing all of that if he was in a normal Heartless situation and didn't actually have the memories of the original. By contrast, Xemnas barely does anything that has to do with the original Xehanort's plan. The only thing that approaches that is the 13 Darkness uh, concept. And that's it. That's the only thing he does. Everything else Xemnas does is his own plan. I've often had a strong theory that Xemnas ultimately was basically doing his own thing and didn't give a damn whether or not he was ever reconstituted into Xehanort or whether uh, Xehanort's long-term plans actually succeeded because he was doing his own thing, basically, because he was his own person. So this that's my evidence for that, and I hope that makes sense. Uh, so Terranort, let's talk about that really quick. Terranort is to Xehanort how Roxas here is to Roxas. Now, I know you're like, what the hell does that mean? This Roxas has his memories currently locked away over here. So he is acting like a different person, but only because his memories are temporarily removed from himself. This is still Roxas in every way that actually matters. Same heart, same identity, same personality. Just his memories have been reverted and altered. Once his memories are restored to him, he becomes the full and complete Roxas once again. That is the exact same situation with Terranort. Terranort is lacking his memories of Xehanort. Indeed, his memories in general. He, he is basically wandering around as an amnesiac and has no idea what's going on. It is not until those memories return to him that he then summons his Keyblade once again and is once again fully Xehanort. Uh, so that's the distinction there. We usually use the term Terranort to, to highlight that because there was a decent period of time, hey Hemo, uh, at least a year, based on what we hear, where Terranort was functional and active even though he, 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 where he didn't get his memories back, basically. So Terranort was functional for nearly a whole year without the memories of Xehanort until they were restored to him. Does that make sense, Titans? Now this is when Titan says, I, I just went AFK. Did he answer my question yet? Because that's what always happens to me. Oh yeah, excuse me. Hemo is correct. There is a third consequence of time travel. You can't change destiny. But we agreed we'd get it finished today. Yesterday. I fell off the station tower, didn't I? You wouldn't be here if you did. But man, that was a close one. Stop changing the subject. <sighs> okay already. You win. We'll do the homework. So I love Twilight Town. I love this intro section. So, I really do. Any, any bright ideas for a topic? I don't really care for this section Maybe right here. Maybe we could study the stuff that's happening to me. You know, the... Dreams. I don't like the homework. The guys in white. Forget it. Why? You know, things have been weird with you in the town since the photos were stolen, right? Well, tomorrow, we're all going to search the town and find out what's been going on. Yeah, the Why Seven Wonders. Yeah. All that for me? I'll go get some ice cream. Guys, stop eating nothing but ice cream. I know that you don't really conform to natural law like we do. You don't need food like we do. But god damn it, people, stop eating nothing but ice cream. I still haven't tried sea salt ice cream myself.
Oh, excuse me. Um, well, only technically Sleeping Heart, since the, the Sisters of Fate only exist in Hercules' world. And in general, in, in any given individual, no matter what their power level is, that power only affects their world, which is why Hades isn't that strong outside of Hercules, which is why the genie can't do that much outside of Agrabah, etc. So the Sisters of Fate wouldn't actually be able to do much uh, outside of um, Hercules. <laughs> Lol, Lord of the Flame. I gotta be honest, Myron, I'm pretty sure a lot of people had that same reaction. Remember, Kingdom Hearts 1 may have been a smash hit, but, uh, damn it, Bay, stop reminding me of that, that movie. Um, so Kingdom Hearts 1 was a bit of a smash hit. Nobody really expected it to be as successful as it was, but it was nowhere near as successful as Kingdom Hearts 2, which is one of the better selling games of the era. Um,. And, uh... The time has come. Our hunt for the Seven Wonders begins. Basically, a lot of people I know started the series with this game, and... Whoa! Yeah. Find new rumors already? It had, uh... Stage. It had an impact on people's impression of the, of the games. Scoop us. We're going to the terrace with Notice there's been, like, no, no music no, sections in this, by the way. Probably part of why I like Here's Twilight Town so much. There's almost no, no music, on, and there's no Sora is Dumb moments. Actually, Hemo, that's exactly what I was going to mention. Uh, I've long wondered why exactly it is that young Xehanort tries to fight and kill, uh, you know, whoever the player character is in Birth by Sleep, which seems just like a ridiculous thing. Why do that? What purpose does it serve? But that is exactly the purpose right there. Trying to see if you can change destiny. Despite his ridiculous level of power, young Xehanort fails to defeat them, fails to alter their destiny, and therefore acknowledges the reality of that and moves on from it. He was literally, in my opinion, at least testing the extent of his time-traveling abilities and trying to understand and, and learn them. I suppose there's actually a fourth limitation to time travel as well. You can only go in one direction. You can't just hop around all willy-nilly like Madness can. You have to specifically go... And whenever you want to go back, you revert and you lose memory of the events that happened. Time travel is extremely limited in Kingdom Hearts, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, I also like it because it means that it's a very good chance we won't see any more time travel in the future. The circumstances Xehanort had to go through in order to make time travel work through him are extensive. Also, lol, nominee. <laughs> Let's hurry. Huh. Uh, Fuke, um, yes there is. The it just involves something that also out. bypasses worlds, like a keyblade. Actually, it's the stupidest thing ever, but this is funny. What? Rise, the one who counted. He's like, every time I count, it's different, you know. <laughs> yes, Titans, and he so has. He just counted wrong. Uh. Hey, no words. Coolest looking character? That's a tough one. Hey, Mazidian. Um, coolest looking character. Man, there's so many cool looking characters in this series. So forgive me for defaulting, but Xemnas in his nobody cloak. The cloak he only wears in the very, 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 very last fight with him. Uh, I have a strong theory about Dream Drop Distance, because if you look at Dream Drop Distance linearly and logically, it actually doesn't make sense. It is inconsistent both with itself and the rest of the series. Unless you you are like, you know, here's one other thing that changes that, and then it's like, oh, at least for me. I'll discuss that when we get there. Don't, don't let me forget. Let's go and get those on the map. There we go. Nothing, Titans. <laughs> Besides, Madness isn't the kind of being that does that. Madness is also one of the only beings that can regularly time travel in the Imperium. Partially due to his nature of being Madness. Oh yeah, that's right. Hey, Night Forger! So we do have aerial recovery. And scan. Thank God. Actually, Leander, yes. Theoretically. 
In fact, that would be a really interesting ending to Kingdom Hearts 3, wouldn't it? Sora gives up his body, goes traveling through time, drags himself through certain events, and so we see, like, the other side of, like, everything that's happened throughout the entirety of the series. Oh, right, I just have to make it. That's right, I remember this, I remember this. Um, uh, RNG! Oh, I made it! Um, and then, yeah, and then the events of Kingdom Hearts happen, basically. That's because he didn't have the Keyblade yet, Nomine. At least I assume that's why he said that. Because remember, young Xehanort didn't earn that Keyblade yet. Xehanort didn't get that Keyblade until he uh, procured it, however, by whatever means, from his master. Uh, his and Ericus' master. Exactly, Samurai. Yeah, I like that idea, too. That's what I'm here for, Infinity Man. To entertain and to encourage thought. That's what my show is all about. Also, hi! Welcome to my stream. Yeah, we've all had the theory that Sora's Kingdom Hearts for a while, Nominee. That's, uh... <laughs> I know I am not alone in that theory. Although I've also postulated that Sora is only a piece of Kingdom Hearts. Either literally just a fragment of it broken off, or he is effectively the heartless of Kingdom Hearts. In a good way. As weird as that sounds. You know, the, the, the emotion, the instinct, the, the, the natural side of Kingdom Hearts. God, why don't I have dodge roll yet? I know, I know. I don't get it, like, ever. <laughs> so yeah, all seven of the wonders are naturally nobodies. Yes, in theory we'll be meeting the other fragment of Kingdom Hearts, uh, if, if our theory about this is true, uh, pretty soon. Hey, Rusty Steiner! Um, yes, I am looking forward to Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, not as much as I wish I was. Hang on just a second, I need to pay attention for just a bit. Ah, and I totally screwed that up. Hang on, hang on. Right, I can just mash. I forgot about this. Kingdom Hearts 2. Triangle button. Just demonstrating what I meant about the triangle button there. No timing, just mash. Anyways, um, what am I looking forward to most in Kingdom Hearts 3? Aqua and uh, Shion, I think, would really be the best way to answer that. Seeing Shion ha get a happy ending would really make my day. She deserves it. And Namine, and Roxas, and Aqua, and a few other people. Um, man, there's a lot of things I would like to see in it. Most especially, I want Sora to do. No, seriously though, my uh, theoretical ending to Kingdom Hearts 3 actually ends with Sora dying. If Disney acquired Star Trek, will there be a Kingdom Heart Klingon Hearts series? Yes, and it's nothing but Klingons eating each other's hearts because they actually do that in lore. It's kind of gross. What is a happy ending for Shion? Ah. Uh, no longer being manipulated, continuing to exist, having friends. The Star Wars version of Heartless? Actually, it's funny you say that for Mosin. Any given dark side person, like a, a Sith user or whatever, who gives in to the dark side so thoroughly and utterly that they're basically a complete idiot, would probably be the equivalent of a Heartless, relatively speaking. It's more thematic than literal. Damn it. A little too slow that time. I really, really hope not green, because that would piss me off. Congratulations! You no longer exist! Have fun! Uh, no, Fuke. Heartless are neither inherently evil nor good. I would argue they're not even inherently anything with regards to morality. Again, beasts. 
base beasts and animals. That's it. That's really all that Heartless are. With the one exception. And even that one exception is a unique case. Like a literally unique case. Damn it, that's not what I meant to... Go away! Let me up! Let me up! Ugh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, Leander. Uh, is there another one? I don't remember. So this is funny, by the way. They'll actually stop if you get in front of them. And they'll slow down if you get close to them. So they don't run you over. <laughs> I just like that little touch there. Anyways, um... Yes, a heartless can grow beyond their nature. Although, again, it's only really happened... Uh, two times that we know of. Three times if one of my theories is correct. Actually, it's funny you say that for Mosin, because it's most likely our uh, the villain in Kingdom Hearts 3 will be all of the above. Xehanort. The full completion of Xehanort. Uh, favorite K Kingdom Hearts game is easily uh, Birth by Sleep. I love his laugh. <laughs> also, one of the most irritating uh, Mushroom 13s is in this very room in the real... Uh, the real Twilight Town. Soul and heart are basically interchangeable words in this one, Fuke, for all intents and purposes. Although, that's not necessarily true. It depends on who you're asking at the time. I usually divide it a little bit differently. Mind, body, heart. The nobodies are the minds, memories, you know, that kind of thing. And, and the bodies. Uh, yes, uh, Last Samurai donated for the donation incentive for me to do uh, all the optional bosses. So I'm going to do my damnedest to actually succeed at all of the optional bosses. Um... I do not promise to succeed at the data organizations or lingering will. I am going to try. I am going to actually make it a serious attempt at it. Say no more. But, uh... But this next yeah. one's going to be really great. Wonder number six. He didn't, Infinitry Man. Uh, this is the nobody's uh, messing with the system. Messing with the programming, specifically. Wonder number six. Yeah, well, I didn't. Actually, it's funny you ask that, Fugue. It's very likely that a person with no mind was what Kyrie was in Kingdom Hearts 1. Remember how it was just her body lying there without any activity or whatever? Because her heart was gone, but there was no darkness in her to create a heartless, so it was just left over there. Just kind of lying there, empty and devoid. So I think that's a pretty good example of what would happen if we see a, an individual who loses their mind rather than heart uh, or, or uh, body. Because that was literally Kyrie's body without her heart. Uh, and most likely without her mind as well. But again, that's just theory on my part. That, that sounds like a statement, not a question, Noel, but I do agree. Most of Sora's skill in this game, in my opinion, comes from Roxas, who, remember, has over a year of experience as a Keyblade Master. More experience than Sora ever had. I've, I've always said that the, one of the reasons Sora is so much stronger in Kingdom Hearts 2 is because he has both Shion and Roxas basically empowering him at this point in time. Uh, that's in addition to Ventus, which we're not even talking about. Uh, so he effectively has access to a large amount of experience and raw power in order to uh, 
be the badass, let's just say what it is, that he is in Kingdom Hearts 2. Because Sora is pretty damn strong in Kingdom Hearts 2. I, I will freely admit that. The train is just not of his own will, not of his own no strength driver, or skill. No conductor, no passengers, no return. Dun dun dun! Anyways, my theory is that remember how uh, remember how the nobodies were getting a little more clever uh, with each given iteration of trying to get Roxas. Uh, oh, hang on, I, I want to talk about this scene. So uh, my idea is that as opposed to just imposing as someone within the system, they were trying to actually rewrite the system directly. Rather than trying to move through the Matrix and interact with someone, they were trying to just rewrite the background stuff of the of the Matrix, if you understand. And that's what the Seven Wonders were. Them kind of uh, redesigning it and trying to see if they could restructure it in a way that would make it easier for them to get to Roxas. Uh, just my take on it. What are you doing out here? That could be, Leander. What do you care? I don't. Tell me anyway. We're waiting for the ghost train. Waiting for the ghost train. <laughs> God, Cypher, really? I like this, by the way. Believe it or not. Why does looking at you always tick me off? I don't know. Maybe it's destiny. I mean, I'm a protagonist and you're an idiot, destiny. so... In that case, let's be friends. I don't feel like cooperating with destiny. Yeah, I don't when think anybody have you ever does. Cooperated with anything. <laughs> that is so cipher right know. there. Tomorrow. Look. See you around, Fuke. Farewell forever. So there's the Yensid train. Here's a question for you guys. And this is just a question, because really we don't have an answer here. And there's really no one aboard. Do you guys think the, the Yensid train is a yeah, regular catch, visit right? to Twilight Town? Or do you think it was a special really? train he sent out just for Mik Mickey and Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2? I always thought he was talking about school samurai, personally. Let's go in. What? Um, you'll get hurt. Huh? The train will be arriving shortly. Ah, I could see that from Austin. It's rising, you know. Come on. A train came from the beach. There was no driver, right? Let's go. Right? Let's go home and work on the paper. The rumors were bogus. The end. Probably nothing. We can still make it sound good if we write about all the work we did. But what about the last one? The seventh wonder? Who cares? I do. Come on, Pence. Whatever. Dog Street. Roxas. I think this is actually our first no music. <sighs> Holy crap. It's at that haunted mansion. The previous scene was okay. That one, though, was a clear no music. Anyways, um, one of the interesting things is there really is this abandoned mansion in Twilight Town. I would actually kind of like it if we, when we go back to Twilight Town, I hope we go back to Twilight Town in Kingdom Hearts 3, we find out that the mansion was actually originally a location that some of the previous Keyblade Masters used, uh, like an in-between master or something, you know. 
Also, I hope we learn more about in-between Keyblade wielders in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Just personal preference. Yes, I'm a little obsessed with the in-between. What do you want from me? I've always been a servant of the gray side of the falls. I should go get some treasure while I'm here really quick. Ah! There we go. Um... <laughs> that would be funny, Hemo. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Made it. Don't worry, Kingdom Hearts Three will never come out. Is there no treasure here in the data version? I. Th um. Well, screw it. No treasure for Arsh. Ah, not really, Takoda. I like how you just carry your struggle bat around with you. See, I was confused because I know there is treasure you can get in the data version. Hell, I've already gotten some, which is, again, kind of weird when you think about it. I will never agree with you, Zira. Besides, heroes don't you need scars cool. on their face. We were going to check the mansion out tomorrow. It is the most suspicious place. So this is what Cypher was right. referring to. He'll mention it in just a second. Even Cypher's gang was gonna help. Cypher? Yeah, Hanner asked him to. Hello, Namine. So, what are we looking for? Well, they say there's a girl who appears at the second floor window. Even though no one's lived here for years. I have, Leander. Also, once again, going back to that uh, symmetrical design, pretty much the whole mansion is completely symmetrical. Never, Zira! Never. Nominee did, Titans. So, hang on. Uh, where is it? A lot of these pictures are very indicative, even of stuff we're not actually supposed to know yet. And I'm trying to find... I, I guess we'll, I'll show it off when we go through here later. Although, there's a big question about who the two other people are in that one picture. See you, Boxes. Final Cloud. Nominee? <sighs> Seriously, who do you think those other two people there this are on the left? Me? And Axel's here, too. You are best friends. Very funny. Don't you want to know the truth? About who you really are? No one knows me better than me. <laughs> Kefka, Formosan. Although both work, Kefka. I don't get what's been happening lately. And not just because I like Kefka. He would fit astonishingly well with Kingdom Hearts, as I've already talked about. You know these three, don't you? Yeah. Sora, Donald, and Goofy. They're from the dreams. About a year ago, some things happened. And I had to take apart the memories chained together in Sora's heart. Yeah, I always assumed now, that was Shion, was one of I'm them at least. I'm putting them all back exactly the way they were. It's taken me a long time. But pretty soon, Sora will be his old self again. The process has been affecting you too, Roxas. You mean, the dreams? Yes. You and Sora are connected. And, in order for Sora to become completely whole again, he needs you. Me? What for? You hold half of what he is. Probably more than half, honestly. He needs you, Roxas. Namine? Like, if I was to put a percentage down, I would say Roxas is actually closer to like 70% of Sora. Especially now Namine. that he has Shion in him. Who are you? I'm a witch, with power over Sora's memories and those around him. A witch? Note the term witch is used as derogatory, but it was given that her, she was given that term me. by Diz. 
as a derogatory. I don't know why I have this power. I just do. I'm not even sure there's a right way for me to use it. Hmm. I can't help you there. Like I said, I do think Ventus is also in Roxas. So like I said, way more than half. Suddenly, I, I feel like I don't know myself at all. I guess I would like to know. Also, that line, I, I feel like I wouldn't know myself at all. What do you know all. about me? Shion! I don't. You... You were never supposed to exist, Roxas. This is another... I just have to point this out. This is yet another example of the misinformation thing. Most of everyone's information about nobodies comes from Ansem the Wise. Even Yen Sid's information, in many ways, comes from Ansem the Wise. And Ansem the Wise hates nobodies. So, and on the other side of the thing, the other person who's been giving out information about nobodies is Xemnas, someone who has been deliberately lying about the nature of nobodies to manipulate them. So, as you can see throughout the series, a lot of times someone will discuss what a nobody is or how a nobody is, and they are wrong provably wrong but they are doing so because they are misinformed it's i think it's funny by the way that both ansem and ansem basically uh were lying or deliberately uh slanting the truth about the natures of nobodies so this is why nominee is pretty uh yes that's correct samurai uh pretty much brutally blunt towards Roxas about his nature and her own nature. Also keep in mind this is a nominee who still feels very very guilty for the events of Chain of Memories. One who will have, is basically accepting of the fact that she's going to be killed after her, her task is done because she doesn't deserve to exist and she's bought into that lie. And because she's bought into that lie she buys into that lie for everyone else. She didn't deserve to get her life so neither does Roxas. It's not malicious. It's not malevolent on Nominee's part. It's a resignation thing. What? How could you even say such a thing? Even if it were true? I'm sorry. I guess some things really are better left unsaid. And of course she doesn't explain anything else because Roxas really doesn't react well to that in initial news. She kinda has Sleeping Heart. Roxas! Roxas! Huh? Did you see her? Yeah. Watch the window. Closely. Ah, oh, lame. That's just the curtains moving. There must be a draft somewhere. Oh, no kidding, Leander. He will continue I'm doing that through this, too. Curtains. Yeah. He will constantly be like, screw well, nominee, well, screw nominee, well, screw nominee. Hainer in a letter waiting. He later on tells Riku flat out that Riku has to dispose of nominee. Like, nominee is a piece of trash to be tossed out. Like a candy wrapper. Once you've actually gotten to the good yeah, inside, I, just I toss know. the candy wrapper out. That's pretty much how well, Ansem well, retreats uh, nobodies in general. In and it's messed up. I figured as much. The report's already done. All right. So, wanna go find Hainer? Yeah, I agree with Samurai. I don't think anyone would take that news well. Hey, Hunter. You know, we only have two more days together. Huh? Diz is literally racist, yes. Remember? He, f he gets over it, thankfully. But he is racist. Okay. Hey, Baronessa. I'm glad I haven't run out of things to say yet. <laughs> I was a little concerned about that. Well, like I said, he's racist towards them, Three Wishes, mostly because he holds a grudge against a few specific nobodies. Basically, five nobodies really, really hurt him. And let's be honest, they did do something Tomorrow, the town. pretty unforgivably Next terrible to, uh, to the Ansem. But because of that, Don't Ansem hates that. all nobodies as a result of the sir. actions of those five. Not if you explode from all that ice cream first. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I gotta point this out. Something that's gonna be a problem in Kingdom Hearts 2 and in Birth by Sleep is the fake laugh track. It drives me crazy every time, uh, every time I hear it. And it's so obvious. And in every single case, they laugh 
like if it was just like a few seconds of ha 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 ha, that would have been fine. But no, it's more like ah ha 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 It goes on forever. Birth by Sleep is actually really bad about that. Yes, those five Toranor. Uh, Zemnis, Zemnis, Zigbar, Zaldin, uh, Vexen, Lexius. Because he missed. And I think that's it, actually. Reach. Hmm. That's almost kind of you. No. What about you? Are the holes in your memory starting to fill in? Yes. The haze is clearing. Note that, once again, we are showcased that the fact that Riku's memory was also affected by it. I point this out because that was never emphasized in Chain of Memories because none of the actual memories specific to Riku were being altered. So it was natural that Riku's memories did not seem so fundamentally altered as Sora, Donald, and Goofy's were. However, his memories were affected, and this is the first time we get confirmation of that fact. The same thing is happening to everyone who had ties to Sora. Very soon, to them... He'd be like a good friend who's gone away for a year. Uh, I'll answer this before I get into the scene. Mickey was hiding so much, for different reasons, really. First, he wasn't hiding. He was just searching the Realm of Darkness for the Keyblade of Dark, the Kingdom Key D. Second reason he was hiding was because he was trying to work against the organization and became aware of just how extensive the organization's reach and power was. Most people didn't realize the extent to which the organization was both manipulating things and was cognizant of things until Mickey started really infiltrating them along with Riku, and they're like, oh crap, these guys are everywhere. So he starts hiding specifically to try and bypass them. Remember, the organization can spy on you perfectly. As long as they know where you are, they can travel through the, the corridor of darkness and sit in the corridor of darkness right next to you and see you and see everything you're doing and hear everything you're doing perfectly, and you aren't even aware they're there at all, unless they announce their presence or exit the, the corridor right in front of you. So they have basically perfect spying capabilities. It's one of the hidden benefits of the Corridor of Darkness. It's something I've always... It's actually hinted at uh, in 358 that Demix is actually very, very good at. He's really good at spying and putting the pieces together. This is also hinted that Vexen was good at that as well. I've waited, and now I want to know. What is it that you want? Revenge. 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 Notice Riku's reaction to that. Now for the finishing touches. First, we must dispose of Namine. She did a splendid job with Sora, but it's high time she disappeared. So yeah, just throw her away. Roxas isn't the only one who was never meant to exist. Take care of it, Ansem. Two possible interpretations here. Interpretation number one. Ansem was so completely... Uh, lost and gone in his own revenge and hatred that he totally thought that Riku would be more than capable of killing Namine. Excuse me. Option two. Ansem is still not really an evil person and there are fragments of conscience within him and he deliberately gave Riku the job of disposing of Namine because he knew no Riku would not actually do it. Take your pick on that one. Um, <laughs> gotcha, Hunter Black. Um, Diz does not actually have Xehanort's eyes. Uh, the eye thing is indicative of darkness. Your eye color uh, is affected by the amount of darkness that's within you. Um, and how you are... It, it, that's actually not quite true. It's more like the amount of darkness that's within you that you have succumbed to is... Uh, it affects your eye color. So, for example, if you submit to darkness, your eyes go bright yellow. We actually see this happen uh, with Terra in a cutscene. Um, but if you accept darkness, you don't get the same quite quite the same reaction. Which is why Ansem's eyes are actually just a little bit different. They're not actually yellow, if you pay attention. They're like a darker orange red, uh, because Ansem the Wise accepted darkness rather than submitted himself to it completely. Uh, Riku's eyes also show a different reaction to that. Also, hence the blindfold, so nobody could see his... Yeah. I see you around here, is that? There are an astonishing number of thematic parallels between Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts, if you think about it. There really are. 
Gorge, is that all that's left of the worlds taken by the Heartless? End of the world. These worlds will be restored if we beat Ansem, right? But if we do beat him, and all these worlds become restored and disconnected, what's gonna happen to this place, and to us? All worlds begin in darkness, and all so end. The heart is no different. That wouldn't surprise me, Hunter. You see, Given the seven princesses of heart, heart being unique because they are absent all darkness. That's not true! The heart may be weak, and sometimes it may even give in. But I've learned that deep down there's a light that never goes out. Kingdom Hearts! Fill me with the power of darkness! You're wrong. I know now, without a doubt, Kingdom Hearts is light! And, I mean, if Sora doesn't know what Kingdom Hearts, who would? Close this door for good. Actually, yes, yeah, Sora. Take care of her. It's okay, he got out thanks to Diz. <laughs> Early. And then, of course, the very last memories that Sora is going to recover is him approaching Castle Oblivion. How's that sound for a weird factor, by the way? Imagine, like, you're walking up to this massive castle, and then you blink, and you wake up, and it's a year later. Imagine what a mind screw that would be. If you had a brain, of course. If you're Sora, you're just like, hey! Let's go. But seriously, walking up to a castle and then, huh? Oh, it's been a year. It's weird. And there's the land of departure. I mean, Castle Oblivion. And yeah, that's pretty much Sora's last memory, right there. I've been to see him. He looks a lot like you. Who are you? Mm. That is a crazy idea, Kelson. Very crazy. But I can see where you're going with that. So to explain just a little bit, for those of you not fully aware, this is Roxas having just defeated Shion, and in his fury and rage, he takes the Keyblades he has gathered from those two. His own Keyblade, represented by uh, Oblivion, and Shion's Keyblade, represented by Oathkeeper. And he's going after Xemnas. He is so pissed off. He is literally just a ball of rage right now. And he is here to go after Xemnas, defeat him, Restore Kingdom Hearts in order to bring Shion back so he can just go back to his real freaking everyday life because he just wants to be with Shion and actually he doesn't care about all this garbage. Lots of research, not so well, and lots of thinking about it. On his way there, Riku stops him because Why? Shion basically asked Riku to do so for all intents and purposes. There's a little more to it than that because R Riku is also here specifically to. Uh, claim Roxas in order to help Sora, but Shion did actually ask Riku to stop Roxas because they both they both were aware of the fact that Xemnas would have curb stomped Roxas, crushed him like a bug, and then everything would have been worse. And that leads to Roxas being shoved into the Matrix. And yeah, at this point in time, the connections between the two are getting so concrete that Roxas is having difficulty maintaining cohesion. As you can see. Like, he is literally starting to physically change. Was Shion Oblivion? I thought Shion was Oathkeeper. It doesn't matter. One of them is one and one of them is the other. Yay, green.
Probably, uh, Man, I could not sleep last night. So this is messed up. Guys? Remember how I mentioned each day gets a little bit more detached from reality? Yeah. Roxas basically doesn't exist in the simulation anymore. He is outside their perception filter now. He's not even in the picture. Notice Pence even has his arm around someone who isn't there. And this is a good example of how to use no music properly, by the way. To really emphasize the whack, the just, uh, of the scene. Just, huh? <laughs> it could also be seen that Oathkeeper is Ventus and Oblivion is, uh, is Shion. I've stated it before and I say it again. I am firmly convinced that Roxas uh, is more Ventus's nobody than Sora's. There's obvious connections between the two, given the fact that Sora and Ventus basically are, for all intents and purposes, the same heart between the two of them. But yeah. Look at what it's come to. I've been given these icky orders to destroy you, if you refuse to come back with me. We're best friends right sure but i'm not getting turned into a dusk for wait a sec you remember now e yeah great <laughs> but you know gotta make sure and all so uh um what's our boss's name <laughs> do you get it memorized oh, can't believe this I gotta be honest, part of the reason I like the entire first section with Roxas is it just feels more polished than most of the Kingdom Hearts series as a whole. The sound design is on point, the voice acting is on point with only a couple of exceptions, the plot is very much coming to a head and has lots of good writing in terms of mystery and suspense and the, the slow escalation of the situation, the slow boil thing going on. It's just very, very well done. I think that's one of the reasons I really love this section. Yeah, exactly, Hemo. Also, this is one of the only times we'll see an assassin nobody, that's Axel's nobodies, uh, in a long time, actually. We will not see them again until the world that never was, I believe. Uh, with, like, two exceptions. Yeah, no kidding, Leander. Mainly because they were motivated in finding it, Pandemonium. Before they really weren't. So this is, again, Ansem just buying time. Quick, quick! Uh, get Roxas, out of there, Roxas! To the mansion! Now! The time has come. Roxas! Leave! Hater! Pence! Olet! Sorry, buddy. They don't even know you exist. He does like that music, Rowan. So again, even seconds later, Axel manages to get free the of that. Roxas that I know is long gone. Fine. I see how it is. How much that must hurt. I'd say because he just lost his other friend, but he doesn't remember that he just lost his other friend. So Axel is now absent friends. Actually, yeah, I think so, Hemo, personally. Why would you do this, Deutsch? Why? In fact, why am I leveling? Let's get out of here. I got better places to level than this. Screw this place. Hey, Perry Berry. 117, wow. Not exactly my biggest marathon, but more than I thought would show up for a Kingdom Hearts game. There's another assassin. We're not going to fight him. So that reminds me, Samurai, have I said anything that you didn't either didn't know or hadn't thought about? <laughs> I always make it a goal to in my lore runs to share at least one thing that someone else who is a big fan uh, hasn't thought about. Like I did with FF9 uh, with, and Omni. Basically disorienting them to Koda. It's not actually magic or anything. It's literally just... Whoop. 
No, three wishes. Stay. Stay with Kingdom Hearts. Also, again, note that he has a real Keyblade at this point in time. So he actually will have the ability to unlock this door. As opposed to the digital one he was given for that one thing. Don't call me and then lock me out. Not even the uh, Ansem the Wise thing? I guess I haven't talked about it yet, have I, Samurai? I'm just going to say it really quick, just because I'm curious if you thought about it already, Samurai. <clears throat> the Ansem the Wise we see here is either the Heartless or Nobody of the original Ansem the Wise. BAM! Okay. Clearly and distinctly Riku, since he's wielding Riku's sword there. Yay, Night Forger. I have succeeded. Once again, the no music works quite well. Good. Damn it, Samurai. Alright, let's see. What else have I got that's big? Um, how about the Isod thing that I mentioned back in Chain of Memories? I don't know if I'd consider it that wild. It fits too many of the pieces to really fit, fit a, feel like a wild theory to me. Is that everything? That hits everything. Uh, yeah, this way. Don't feel like fighting. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, thank you, Nick Nick. So I'm going to showcase more of these uh, this time around, now that I actually have the ability to do so. Ah. Most of these are pretty obvious. Like, that was clearly Hollow Bastion right there. This is clearly the world that never was. And Roxas, for that matter. And that one over there is clearly Hollow Bastion in the, in the keyhole. Damn it, Samurai. Alright, what else have I got that's a big theory? Of course, you and I have already talked about the really big theory, Zigbar and Sora. Hmm. Also, one nice thing is that uh, Ansem the Wise's memory lock it down, what is only ever going to be temporary. So it's kind of natural that uh, Roxas's memories would basically Reminds return on their own that. here. Why did the Keyblade choose me? I have to know. You can't turn on the organization. Let's make a note here. Yes, Zigbar and Sora, in my opinion, are very significant to the series. That is a theory. A lore theory, but I it fits a lot of the pieces in my mind. So I don't think it's in the wild theory 13. category. A bad group. Bad or good. I don't know. Both would be more accurate. They're a group of incomplete people who wish to be whole. To that end, they're desperately searching for something. What? Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Funny? It's just... I think... I've been running away from the question I really want to ask. What's going to happen to me now? Just tell me that. Nothing else really matters anymore. What do you, you mean? Are... Ask him to go with him where, Green? So that's Ansem deleting the projection of Namine there. There's no knowledge that has the power to change your fate. Even if it doesn't, I want to know. I have the right to know. A nobody doesn't have a right to know. Nor does it even have the right to be. Thanks, Ansem. But what is a nobody? Bigot. Diz, we're out of time. Too many nobodies. Yeah, notice by this point they're basically being swarmed. That's why there's enemies everywhere Roxas. about them. Nobodies like us are only half a person. Arguably more they than half. disappear. You'll be whole. I'll... Disappear? No further outbursts. No, you won't disappear. You'll... Wait. Roxas, we 
we will meet again. And then we can talk about everything. I may not know it's you, and you may not know it's me. But we will meet again. Someday soon. I promise. Let her go! Nominate! So, we've got Destiny Islands. Ah, camera's inverted. Uh, hang on, let's... <laughs> ah, there we go. There's actually a lot of pictures. See, that's Hollow Bastion, the big room where we fight Riku. Uh, that's Destiny Islands, as I already mentioned. Uh, right here we have... If I could get the camera angle right. Uh, well, I obviousness. The tree, Riku, Kairi, Sora. Ah, Ah, damn it. Hang on. What? No, ah, there we go. This is. For some reason, it's like inverted when I'm in first person mode, the controls. Once again, those three. Although you notice uh, the way she scribbled over herself. That's Repliku, that's Sora, that's Namine, and she scribbled over herself. Really uh, nicely done there. Um, Obvious significance. I've already pointed out that one, which is, of course, the Hollow Bastion keyhole. Uh, there's that one room that was back in Traverse Town, you know, the one Eris and Squall were always in. Kyrie, of course. This is the most significant one of them, I think. In my opinion, one of those two on the on the left there is Shion. The other is most likely Saix. Uh, those two are, of course, clearly and distinctly Axel and Roxas, but the other two is much more debatable. I mention this because this might actually be one of the only remnants of Shion that's actually left. Although, again, that is just uh, an opinion, uh, so we don't actually know for certain. Ah, here we go. Uh, Kyrie and Sora again. This is uh, Riku coming across the uh, room that Namine had been working with. Uh, Axel, obvious. So, ah, God, cameras. Uh, Sora, Donald, Goofy, and of course Destiny Islands or Jungle Book. I'm not sure which. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, there's that picture again. We've already seen that picture. Uh, the the library at Hollow Bastion. Ah, there we go. Roxas and Sora. The cave door in Destiny Islands. Captain Hook's ship. This one's an interesting one, because I've heard this one debated for some time. This one's either significant or isn't, and I'm not sure which it is. Um, I've heard some people say this is supposed to be Atlantica. I've heard some people say this is just supposed to be Sora's room. I don't actually know. <laughs> and I think that's actually all of them. Oh, wait, I, oh, there's one more to show up, right? I was doing this one last. Yeah, if I can get in the right angle for it. Ah, can I, like... There we go. Okay, and the last one there. Um, if I could get it. Angle. There we go. Once again, just them sitting on the tree on Destiny Islands. <sighs> actually, Samurai, that's a good point. That might actually be the land of departure instead of anything, anything else. Which would again be a very, very, very quiet form of foreshadowing that like is totally invisible unless you're doing it the next time around. Oh, you're right. That's the Traverse Town mural, isn't it? You're right. I didn't even catch that. Because once you pick up the gummy from it, it goes from a sun to a moon. You're right. You're right. My bad. Mm. Oh yeah, it was absolutely good uh, listening to all of you, really, chat to quite a... I was like hearing my chat tell me about how stupid I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Honestly, I feel one of the biggest reasons they never try to explain it to Roxas is Riku's still at a case where he feels like he's doing the wrong thing. I mean, I know that sounds like a weird thing, but I mean it sincerely. Riku is still ethically in a quandary about this whole situation. Namine, I've already explained why she doesn't explain anything. And Ansem, I've already explained why he hasn't explained anything. So yeah. There, there's definitive reasons why nobody's really bothered to sit down with Roxas and be like, look. It's, a, it's an appealing idea, Hemo. I like the concept of a trio as well. It's one of the most complete shapes in, in geometry and mathematics, so...
Yeah, I've had some people ask, why is the number 20 so significant to Kingdom Hearts? It isn't. The number 7 is significant, and the number 13 is significant. It's kind of separate. Yeah, Handsome's a dick. That's a good way to put it. I picked up on that one immediately, by the way. The three symbols we draw. Light, darkness, and in-between. I picked up on that the very first time I saw this. But then again, I've had the theory of the in-between since the first Kingdom Hearts. Like, when it first came out. Damn it, Samurai. I may not actually have any other big theories. One of my other big ones was the uh, the difference between Ansem's uh, Xehanort's Heartless and Zemnis, which I've already talked about. Last few memories unlocking here. It's so appropriate that someone who has been through all the garbage that Roxas has been through in his in his fairly short life would have so much rage in him. Notice Lexius, Marluxia, all the Chain of Memories characters already have their hoods off. Also, just because if I don't mention it, someone else will, the height of their thrones is relative to their relative rank and this relative amount of success they've been having in accomplishing goals of the organization. It is worth noting that the height of those thrones can be changed at will. We'll actually see this happen live in Dream Drop Distance. Um, so it may just be yet another manipulation by Xemnas. An enforced social hierarchy, if you will. Even if it's kind of Why? fake. Why do you have the keyblade? Shut up. I'm pretty sure they will, Leander. We only see Sora for like a couple minutes after he regains all of, or gains, I should say, all of Roxas's memories. But I think they're indicative. Will it work? If we can maintain the simulated town until Namine finishes chaining together Sora. To hide his eyes, Miko. What will happen to Roxas? He holds half of Sora's power within him. In the end, he'll have to give it back. Until then. He'll need another personality to throw off his pursuers. Hmm. Poor thing. It's the fate of a nobody. Notice how dismissive that is, by the way. It's the fate of a nobody. Dick. The biggest asshole? Honestly, probably say an orc. Yes, Dakota. I mentioned the memories being locked away thing. Yeah, Riku's actually seen this happen. Literally seen this happen. Uh, yes. There we go. <laughs> hey, as long as you don't piss that teenager off, Samurai. Like, a lot. Once again, I wish we could see more than be told. This is analogous to the waves and waves of Heartless situation that happened back in Hollow Bastion in the first game. The idea here is that supposed to be that we are literally being swarmed with uh, nobodies right now, and we kind of aren't. And that's a problem, because it kind of affects the scene. The point is that this place is supposed to be just crawling with these. A, because it emphasizes what the organization can call upon and will. B, to emphasize how much they want Roxas back their controllable Keyblade Puppet. 
Of course, it is, as I've mentioned before, worth noting that, uh... Freaking assassins. Uh, it is worth noting that, uh... They did, uh, or Zemnus at least, always had the backup backup plan of just manipulating Sora in order to do their bidding, rather than using Roxas, but... It is interesting, considering they still try to get Roxas back, even after he's in Sora. Damn it. Come on. Oh my god! Come out of the floor! I was waiting for the reaction command to yank them out, but I guess you can't do that on these ones. Well, I don't have block equipped, so screw you. Axel. <laughs> I like this line you right really here. You really do remember me this time. I'm so flattered! And once again, we see Axel is actually pissed off at this point. But you're too late! Oblivion and Oathkeeper. Because remember, he has two hearts in him. Uh, actually, technically, he has more than two. He has three. His own, she owns, and Ventus. Although, again, the location of Ventus' heart is debatable. So it's possible Ventus' heart is over in Sora. We don't know. Come here. I'll make it all stop. But yeah, this is Roxas actually being Roxas effectively for the first time at this point. Also, this is a, a bit of a tip, tip for how uh, uh, Valor Form is going to work later on. Right, I keep hitting Y, which is what I usually have equipped for that. For reasons I don't have to explain, I don't think. Everyone, Titans. He's mad at Roxas for this whole stupid situation. He's mad at the organization for facing him to fight his friends. He's mad at Shion. All I gotta say to this is, no matter how many times you head out, I'll always be there to bring you back! That's gotta be what's going through his mind right now. Even though, again, he doesn't even remember Shion. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, I've been stunlocked. No, because it's just representative of the two hearts, Takoya. It's also why dual wielding is actually feasible as a as a fighting strategy in this game, or in this series, I should say. Dual wielding is almost always stronger than solo wielding, actually, because you're wielding two hearts. Seriously, though, I would have loved it if Roxas actually pulled out a third Keyblade right here. That would have been absolutely perfect. No, Axel realizes he has to make a decision here. You get he... on their bad side and they'll destroy you. No one would miss me. Hey, Stringent. That's not true. I would. So again, Axel had a choice walking into this fight. He could kill Roxas, and let's make this clear. Axel could kill Roxas. He is more than skilled and strong enough to do that. Or he could die. Or he could go on the run from the organization. Axel. Fake his death and try to do his own thing separate. Let's meet again in the next life. Also yeah. the irony of that statement. I'll be waiting. Since Roxas isn't going to have a next life any more than Axel is. At least so they both think at this point. Just because you have a next life. But again, another faked death. If you really pay attention, the graphics between the fake deaths Axel does and the real deaths are different. So you could tell if you're really paying attention. See you around, Emma. So now a scene that makes me freaking ball every time I see it. But I want to point out one other thing here really quick. I feel like Axel did this on purpose. He leaves a corridor to darkness that specifically is left open. He literally leaves the corridor open in the digital scape. There is almost no possible reason for him doing that 
except for the fact that it might be useful in the future. Now, I don't think he necessarily planned for Sora to use this to get to the world that never was, um, but I do absolutely think he planned for this to be a back door, whether he needed it or Roxas needed it or whatever. There was some benefit to leaving this back door open here, and I like the fact that you can see it right here. This is actually how we'll reach the last dungeon right here. Um... Probably because they didn't care about the digital scape anymore, Samurai. And if you remember, this is only a, a doorway to the Corridor of Darkness, not a doorway directly to anywhere else. This is just an open hole within the, the Corridors of Darkness. So someone who does not have the power to open those could then access them. The mere fact that, that what I just said is true is probably one of the reasons why I think, and uh, I've heard a couple other people say this as well, uh, that Axel probably left this basically for the good guys because they don't have the ability to open those corridors like he does at will. Um, Xehanort's end goal is to destroy all of reality and remake it better. That's a huge summarization, but that is what he's after. He wants to wipe the entirety of all of existence out and remake it into something that he feels is better. More accurate. More balanced. Light and dark, rather than the tyranny of light. Probably, yes, yeah, starts pandemonium. Again, it's that whole etchings in the heart thing. Shion's uh, impact on these people is probably still there. They were basically best friends, Fallout Bear. Donald. They were pretty damn good friends. Goofy? They spent the better part of a year interacting with each other, hanging out, getting to know each other, caring about each other, etc. Basically, Roxas was, and I don't mean this in a literal sense, effectively a zombie. And Axel was the one there for him. And the two basically grew as a result of that. At last, the key blades chosen one. So mocking. Who are you talking to? Me? Or Sora? To half of Sora, of course. You reside in darkness. What I need is someone who can move about the realm of light and destroy Organization 13. Why? Well who are you? I just feel like pointing out the irony that Xemnas wanted to control and manipulate Sora, Roxas, and Shion, and Ansem wanted to control and manipulate Sora, Roxas, and Shion. I am a servant of the world. <laughs> and if I'm a servant, See around then you should consider yourself a tool, tool at, best. at best. Was that... was that supposed to be a joke? Cause I'm not laughing! Yes, that is Christopher Lee. My apologies. This is only a data-based projection. Oh yeah, and nominee, sorry. Although she doesn't wield a keyblade for some reason. Even though she should actually have the ability to do so. Over here. Hey, Nerezos. So this line gets much, much more tragic after having watched 358. After having played through 358. I hate you so much. You should share some of that hatred with Sora. He's far too nice for his own good. No! My heart belongs to me! Could be, Samurai. And given her whole self-confidence, weakness, cowardice, I don't deserve to exist thing, it's very likely that's true. Sora. <sighs> also, also note that Roxas is not really willing like here. my summer vacation is over. <sighs> Note that the title screen doesn't show up till here. Brilliantly done. This whole intro section is just amazing. <sighs> God. 
Anyways, um, what was I saying? Um, right. Notice that Roxas is not actually willingly uh, re-emerging with Sora. Uh, which is relevant because that helps explain part of what's wrong with Sora and explains the scene that'll happen in the world that never was. Hey, Mickey. This is now in the actual Twilight Town here. Very incognito. <laughs> Sora! Who's there? Oh, that sucks, j -Lock. I'm sorry. Well, okay, what happened here, and this is just indicative of how flawed Ansem's approach was. He basically figured, as long as I get Roxas into Sora, it doesn't matter. It never occurred to him that forcing a joining between Sora and Roxas by making sure that Roxas was as pissed off as possible before he did it would have actually been a bad thing. In many ways, Ansem is directly responsible for most of the reasons as to why Sora is so messed up in this game. Let's be clear. The Sora is dumb counter is mostly in good fun. Sora is very stupid in this game, and very bigoted, and kind of a rude dick in this game. But it's all understandable because, again, he is in every way a completely broken person who is operating on misinformation and flagrant lies. So it is fully understandable why Sora acts the way he does in this game. Doesn't make me uh, any less pissed off. Doesn't irritate me any less because of the way he acts. But, again, he is fully and is fully uh, explainable, basically, why he is this way. No, Formosan. I still have to do the, the laugh next time we see Sora's dumb, which will probably be in a few seconds, because we're in a scene Sora's in, and it's Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> And then this lighthearted, happy, adventurous music plays. I'm going to go ahead and talk about one thing right here that I'll talk about again during the ending. I know, weird. Kingdom Hearts 1 was very much the adventure. Yes, we're going out and we're saving the world and we're being a hero and it's great. And then, um, and then Kingdom Hearts 2 happens and, and Sora the whole way through is like, yeah, we're going out on an adventure. And yet the whole time it isn't. Kingdom Hearts 2 is very clearly, the stakes have gotten real. Things have gotten much darker. Things have gotten much more serious. Things are pretty much horrible all around. And it really lacks that feeling of adventure. And yet the whole way Sora is still acting as if this is just another big adventure. Refusing, basically, to grow up. Refusing to be like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so this music helps add to that, that, uh, that idea that Sora is more or less not delusional so much as like self-deluding. He is deliberately trying to force the mentality of this is just another grand, wonderful, exciting adventure when it isn't. Things are much, much darker, much more real, much more serious, much more tense. Yeah, exactly, Green. He's still just playing the kid. But part of him understands that he's wrong, which is why I say self-deluded. Because not only is there a part of Roxas in him, which is constantly conflicting with this fact, but he's like, it's like walking up to someone and saying, hey, everything's great, right? And the person's like, no. <laughs> and so Sora, despite all his stupidity, is recognizing throughout the course of the game, and I'll point these out as we go, these moments, Sora recognizes throughout the course of the game how things aren't this grand adventure like they should be, and he just keeps plowing on like, no, no, it's a grand adventure, I swear. It's not until the literal end of the game when he finally gets to realize, and he finally drops the denial, it's a good word, Nero says, and he finally acknowledges the reality of how things are, and grows to accept the consequence of living in a dangerous and horrible reality. Um, and, of course, that leads rather beautifully into the ending of Kingdom Hearts 2, the actual, the final, final end, the thing that happens after Recoded, a.k.a. I now know that all these other lives have been ruined, and I have to take responsibility for that, especially since part of it is his own fault, and he knows that, and I have to actually go and try and do something about that, and that leads directly into Dream Drop Distance. But for now, he's just the kid. Oh, <laughs> 
Last thing I remember, we were approaching a creepy castle! Yay! I also like the idea that Jiminy was just in his hood the whole time. We were asleep? I guess we must have been, or I don't think we'd be so drowsy. He'll be in the tight clothes for a very short period of time. We'll get him some real clothes soon. And his new outfit looks way better. Let's see. We defeated Ansem. Yup. Restored peace to the world. Found Kyrie. Yeah, he grew a lot in a oh, year. Yeah. <laughs> and then, we went to look for Riku. then again, so did uh, Riku. I think that's right so far. Plan What does your journal say, Jiminy? Gee. Oh, here it is. Thank nominate. Hmm. I wonder, wonder who that is. is. Note Ansem didn't even allow Nominate to be here for his awakening. Think about that for a moment. Uh, well, what do you say we find out where we are? <sighs> oh, also, get used to this new thing. Because it's going to drive me absolutely bonkers, and I'm going to be doing my best not to... Uh, to go completely obsessive on getting rid of the new thing every time it shows up. How many of you guys have that exact same problem? No, get rid of the new! Get rid of the new! Yeah, no kidding, Jaywalk. Damn it, give me Roxas back, you bastard. Ah. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about that. Oh, speaking of which, this was the first Mushroom 13 I beat, the one that's right here. I just felt like sharing that. Wait, what, Bregwin? I must have missed something you said earlier. Feels like the second part to a sentence. But I don't see anything. Damn it, Bregwin. But yeah, the new thing just completely destroys my uh, OCD. Actually, there are samurai. I never actually beat the Lakshius one in uh, Agrabah. And... I think that might actually be it. No, I feel like there's one other I never beat. I don't remember who, because I beat the one in Twilight Town. The other one, the one in the corridors. I beat the one here. This is the first one I beat. Um, beat that one, I beat that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Lakeshius one was the only one I didn't beat. And it was largely because it was like, well, I could go grind to beat it for no reason. And I just didn't bother. Damn it, Bregwin, speak! Speak or be destroyed in bed. Or, I mean, in the bathroom. Or, I mean... Like I said, Samurai, I was just lo too low level to you bring know? him down. Literally too I low level. I've been to this town. See you around, Shuri. What's the town? Hmm. Yes, I must have imagined it. God, he looks so awkward in that clothing. <laughs> Damn it, Grizzler. Actually, there's two possibilities for that one, Leander. Basically, the limit form is either him trying to artificially do what I talked about earlier, a.k.a. the self-denial, uh, connecting with connecting with the original what self, or, uh, um, nothing? Just wondering what was back here. it's Ventus's heart. Now you know. This is our spot. Um, what? You're new around here, right? I'm Pence. Hainer, nice to meet you. But we got stuff to do, so catch you later. Hey, there's such My a dick. Name's Alette. Hey, did you finish up the summer homework yet? Independent studies are the worst, huh? Man, I hated homework. independent studies and homework. Hey, what are your names? Oh, sorry. Uh, we're Sora, Donald. Just for fun, I'm going to write down the Sora Donald Goofy counter, just for the heck of it. See how high we get with that one. Sora, Donald. There's another one. We just met someone who was looking for you. He sure seemed in a hurry. He had a black coat on, so I couldn't see his face. But he had these big round ears. 
I'm pretty sure you can see Mickey's face in the organization Let's cloak. Go! Where'd you see him? At the station. The station, thanks. Yeah, that's a good well, point. School? What the heck is time. that? Which is funny, because kyrie has been going to school, so is Selfie. But Later. Sora's like, nah. No, I'd have to do the graphic. Wow, Zero Hunter. Yeah, and I'm going to that. Yeah, it's very, very likely, based on what we see, that the data versions were basically de-rezzed, de to use the Tron term. Uh, but whatever forms of hearts they were generating re uh, still have an impact on the real hearts ones, so... Eighty-five? Wow. That's gonna be about that, Steiner. They say that a lot. Sora doesn't need school. He's saving the world, like, three times. Well, two times, and then he fails miserably, and Riku has to bail him out. Heroes don't need an education. Sturges, tell her. What, Zero? <laughs> Holy crap! Now remember the nobodies were already infiltrating the fake Twilight Tone, so it's logical that they'd already be here. Which I only mention because otherwise them attacking him doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, I like how Sora's like, eh, whatever, and just goes ahead and attacks them. Has no idea what these things are. No concept whatsoever. Just, okay, there's a thing, I'll attack it. That's what I do. I attack things. Also, given that perception filter thing I mentioned earlier, let's just say that there's a pretty strong theory that uh, the uh, some of the nobodies literally cannot tell the difference between Sora and Roxas, and therefore literally think this is Roxas here. So it would make sense that the lesser nobodies, if that theory is true, would literally presume that this is uh, Roxas here. get some uh, free levels here, because these guys give tons of X for this part of the game, relatively speaking. Well, they aren't friendly no more! Actually, fun fact, given the events and it, my, my theory about these being after Roxas, it's pretty likely these would have just been like, alright, let's go. Just kind of escorted him to his new location. Now, granted, that would have gone very badly, but, you know... I swear to God, if they pull that Immaculate Con Conception's crap with Sora, I, I know he's Kingdom Hearts, I don't care. If they bother to say that, I'm going to destroy the world. The whole world. Yes, yeah, Saiyak's had a lot of trouble uh, differentiating in many cases. He had that trouble with Xion, too. Xion, excuse me. His mother's name is... No, it's Mickey! With the... Try to remember, this is only the second time they've seen Mickey. Since the game for games began. Shh. You gotta board the train and leave town. The train knows the way. That is actually legitimately what I think happened to Koida. I imagine his mother is adoptive. And I mean that sincerely. That might also explain why he just has a mother. Was that really him? It could have been. Yep, I know it was. Yes, I remember what happened King in Kingdom Hearts One. In the realm of darkness, right? Uh huh. Ah! We no, Mickey. And if the king 
is here. That means Riku's here. Which is funny because Riku actually is here. Well, I'm gonna go look for Riku. Then he and I can go back to the islands together. Kairi's there waiting for us. What are you two gonna do? Damn it, King Mickey. What are you putting it towards, uh, <clears throat> King Mickey? Your face. What do you say? I am astonished we haven't had a, a Sora is uh, is stupid moment yet. To where again? We have to board the train. Oh yeah. Come on. Spoiler alert, Sora's adopted mother is actually Xehanort's daughter. Damn it, Bregwin, stop being Dr. Wily. Put it towards. Alright. So that we're at this much. Oh, jeez. We're almost maxed on that. Ugh. Uh, Chaos Bringer, I, I'm sorry, I actually spent a long time discussing the full details of the difference to Nobody and Heartless earlier. I, I don't want to really rehash all of that. Wait up. I, I think we'll go ahead and call that a Sora's dumb moment, because like I said, um, or like was said in chat several times, uh, Mickey's like, go use the train, and Sora's like, so where are we going? So, uh, <clears throat> as promised, because it was donated for, I have to do the Final Fantasy X Tidus laugh the next time Sora's done. So, ha 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 Oh, sorry, drifted there a little bit. Hey, Sora, what? Nothing, but we came to see you off. It just seemed like something we ought to do. Oh. Really? Thanks. You should hurry and get your tickets. Right. Why do we need tickets for a train that, that leads to what is effectively another dimension? <sighs> I could do the Yoda of the laugh. <laughs> Oh my please. god. Oh my god. You know what would have been really horrible that they never did? Okay, we need to get, you know, Riku or Sora to give in to darkness. What's a good way to do this? Hey, Riku. Here's your parents. Stab! Stab! I can't <laughs> like we won't see this town again. Don't worry, we'll see it again, like twice, actually. Why not? You're thinking too much. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? You're thinking too much, Sora. There it is. There's the explanation. That's why Sora is so stupid in the entire game because he was thinking too much, and Goofy told him not to. It's all Goofy's fault. Oh my god. <laughs> Sora's dumb. Oh my god. No, no, guys. Goofy is trying to main keep his uh, his role as the smart person. He doesn't want anyone else usurping his, his position as the only person who uses his damn brain. I guess Sora did go along with it, so we'll call that another to the Sora's Dumb. There we go. Uh, yes, we're ready to leave. No, Ultimate Paradox, he just copy-pasted the whole town. Okay. People included. Let's go. Bye. Bye. Hey, Sora. You sure we haven't met before? Well, you do have a recusant on your necklace, so... Positive. Why do you ask? I 
I don't know. The tear amuses me in a horrible, horrible way. Obviously, Roxas would care about his brief friendship with these three people, but it's more the fact that Roxas is feeling through him yeah. the loss of friends in general. Pull it together. About four hours ago, Ace. Right. See ya. Remember, Roxas never actually had a strong friendship with these three, but he'd have a strong friendship with other people, and that's gone now. Well, you don't see it. I am Sam. Nominee. Wow, someone who doesn't have blue eyes. Sorry. Ain't no getting off this train we're on. Sorry, sorry. I've had FF7 on the brain lately for some weird reason. No, plot twist, Sora is Jar Jar Binks. Except it's not that much of a twist. Stretch his face out a bit and it looks perfect. You know... I'm sad. We'll be back. Yeah, we can visit Hainer and those guys again. And another dimension. Kind of. Yes, it's towers. Weird. It's just the gem from the uh, uh, from the trophy that's that Roxas took. The digital trophy specifically that w that Roxas took off. So this scene is great Guess right here. That's that. Let's go. Go where? It's not like we have homes to return to. We don't exist. Remember? Yes, it's true. We may not have homes, but there is some place I want to go. And someone I want to see. Same here. <laughs> Poor Axel. So, you think you might let us go? I know you're here to get rid of us, but... Also, I love that Dennis thought, since I'm pretty sure... Wants to get rid of me? So, yeah, two things about that real quick. First of all, I'm pretty sure Axel would have defeated Riku. I'm just gonna say that. Second of all, Namine's reaction to that is interesting. This entire time... She's obviously been told by Diz, you don't matter, you don't matter, you don't matter. But her reaction to being told that Diz actually wanted to kill her really says just how insidious that situation was and the fact that Ansem was keeping that little fact uh, to himself, which, yeah, that's pretty messed up. Go. You sure about this? I owe you both. For what? Castle Oblivion. You helped us. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. Come on, Nominee. That could be Bregwin, but you. it does... I don't know. I, I, I just I think it really shows how messed up this situation was in general. So one of those final mix scenes I think really adds to the thing. Especially how Riku, you know I I, I don't think Riku would have brought could have brought himself to kill those two. Not even, you know, the Riku from Chain of Memories. But remember, this is a Riku who's been around for a year, who's been growing and learning for a year, so yeah, I don't think he would have done that at all. So here we are. The Ensid's Tower. So, given Yen Sid's age, he was probably learning Keyblade things right about the time Ericus and Xehanort were. Um, I mentioned that 
Because if Ericus is the light and Xehanort's the darkness, Yensen actually fits the idea of the in-between decently well. <laughs> there goes our ride. Sora's dumb. <laughs> the laugh sells that one. I mean, seriously, dude. Uh, yeah, me too, Takoida. And I do think that's kind of what Axel was thinking. Especially given how all the crap Axel's been through at this point in time. Um, so we're about to meet probably my favorite Disney character uh, in the series. And I mean that sincerely. But I just want to talk about Yensid really quick. Yensid feels like stagnation incarnate. And I almost feel like that wasn't done on purpose. Yensid is in many ways an older version of Sora. Hear me out. Well-meaning... Well-intentioned, but making mistakes. You know, st uh, working on it, misinformation, spreading misinformation, and basically pushing people in the wrong directions many, many times, which leads to bad things happening. So, that's just my take on Yensid. I also... Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Pete! What's going on? <laughs> I sent some of my lackeys inside to see if the master in his here towers as big and tough as they say. Word is he's a real powerful sorcerer, which would make him the perfect bodyguard for me. <laughs> see, it don't matter how tough he is. Once he's a heartless, he'll do as I say. Uh-huh, well... That's right. They're those things that come out of the darkness in folks' hearts. Why, with all those heartless at her side, my dear friend Maleficent is gonna conquer everything. And since I got me a debt to pay, I'm going round to a bunch of different worlds and building an army of heartless, special for her. Note that even this early on, he mentions his debt to her, which isn't even brought up again until Birth by Sleep, when we find out where that debt comes from. Also, remember that, as I pointed out, uh, Pete and Maleficent had a surprising amount of genuine loyalty to each other, and that'll be remain true throughout the whole series. Final note, where the hell was Pete in Kingdom Hearts 1? And why does he not know Maleficent was defeated in Kingdom Hearts 1? Actually, the answer to the both of these is very, very Disney. Pete was busy. He was so wonderfully oblivious that he was just... Oh, Maleficent's dead? Is basically what Pete was doing. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the stream, Big Avella. Don't be a stranger. If you got any questions, you got any chat, feel free to share and discuss. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, why am I talking to you pipsqueaks anyway? Go on, Scram. I'm behind schedule as it is. I actually agree with Lava, by the way. something nicer to do. Oh, says who? Huh? Oh, it's you! Pete? Huh? What are you two nimrods doing here? Also, Jim Cummings just sells you know this it? role so hard. We sure do. Pete's been causing trouble for ages. His Majesty banished him to another dimension a long time ago. Actually, Minnie Wonder did that. How he escaped. <laughs> you want to know how, eh? Well, Maleficent busted me out, that's how. And now your world. No, no, no. All the worlds are going to belong to yours truly. Because uh, Maleficent's going to help me conquer them. Maleficent? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you laughing at? Why, Maleficent's power is so great that... She's toast. Huh? Sorry, but Maleficent can't help you now. What do you mean? You! Pete is from the so Disney World, the Ace. Did it. The Disney well, World. Well, we might have had something to do with it. Heartless squad, round up! So, to, uh, theory time, and this is when Samurai's gonna be like, I've totally never heard of that theory, except he probably does actually have, have, have this theory too. The, there is no explanation ever given for how Pete can use the Heartless so frequently and so commonly without any negative effects, and why he can just casually move through the Realm of Darkness without any issues. He uses Corridors of Darkness constantly, and yet he has no armor, no protection, no nothing. So how? 
How exactly does he do all this? Some people say, oh, it was Maleficent's magic that protects him. But that's bullcrap, because Maleficent couldn't even protect herself from that. No. I'll tell you exactly why Pete can do this. He has a combination, combination of an extremely strong heart and, um, uh, well, again, I go back to the his oblivious nature is so on part that, be, that he actually can't be affected by things that would otherwise affect normal people. Unlike Jafar, who had that menace to him. Unlike Hades, who has that uh, malevolence to him. Unlike Oogie Boogie, who has the terror to him. You know, I, I could name other Disney villains as well. Most of these Disney villains have some aspect of them to that makes them a villain. Pete, by contrast, is barely a villain. I mean, yeah, he's selfish, absolutely. But I would not even, in the tiniest little bit of a way, refer to Pete as evil. Not even for a second. He is, yeah, he is literally cartoonishly oblivious. He is the Wily E. Coyote effect, a.k.a. gravity does not take effect because I do not notice gravity exists. Ergo, Pete is not affected by the darkness because he doesn't notice that it should be affecting him. Um, yeah. And again, I want to stress that I really, really, uh, I very much doubt that, uh, or very much, very much think, excuse me, I very, very much think uh, that he uh, has a very, very powerful heart uh, in his own way. You just wait. Nobody, and I do mean nobody, messes with the mighty Pete. As a weird thing, I like his so outfit here. mighty Pete. Who lives in this tower anyway? Oh, you don't know, eh? Well, it's old Yen Sid. Disney. Of course, he's probably a heartless by now. Master Yenshin lives here? Technically, yes, Kelson. But again, he lacks the anything to make take advantage of that because oblivious. Yen Sid is the king's teacher. Wow, sounds powerful. The most common king heart. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I do too. Um. The most common King Hearts two theory. Let me think about that. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm here for, Shmoo. Mind blow. No, I'm kidding. That's not the main reason I'm here. I also like how the opening the chest, chest animation is both quicker and smoother. Uh, and also kind of showcases how Sora's changed in Kingdom Hearts 2. But I don't want to get into that discussion. Um, I don't know. What is the most common Kingdom Hearts 2 theory? Samurai, help me out here, man. Oh my god, it's the Heartless! So I just realized I kind of have to Korean method this game because I don't have my level spot. I'm still upset about that. That is what actually heralds the end time, Sabo. Okay, so I do have one small complaint about Kingdom Hearts 2, and it extends into Birth by Sleep as well. So, in a lot of cases, I'm not even just talking about boss bosses, all boss battles, but a lot of regular fights, they have to have the, loop, and here's the enemy, and then once you beat the enemy, there's the slow-mo, because you beat the encounter, and that does get a little old in some cases. Uh, Korean method is defeat everything in your way, basically. In other words, don't skip any encounters. Um, the... Uh, my favorite leveling spot is the plateau in the Lion King section, which doesn't exist in this version. Doesn't work at all. Notice that this place is still technically considered a part of Twilight Town, by the way. That's another reason why some people speculate that Yen Sid would be the in-between of the, that particular trio. Yeah, I guess there is the big theory about Ansem the Wise. See, look, again, here's the encounter, and then we'll defeat them, which will not take long. I will say one thing, Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, even on the PS2 version, they got better with the hardware, so they could render more enemies at once, so there's a lot less of that whole, uh, 
here's three enemies, and then 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 there's three enemies. And I, I, yeah, that used to just drive me crazy in Kingdom Hearts 1. Well, it's a good thing we're on the job then. That would be pretty so cool, Clegio. That would make sense, too. All? Uh, no, Kelson. Um, so here's an interesting thought for you guys. Given that this game is much more focused on the more serious aspects of, of the story, and that the theme of this game could be argued to be nothingness, or the nobodies, or however you want to interpret that, it's interesting, I guess it's not really the question, but I just find it interesting that this game has, you, you don't really fight the nobodies or the organization much until the halfway point in the game, and even then it's actually a much weaker presence than the Heartless. But that also emphasizes a point. One of the things this game does very, very well, the Heartless are relatively weaker compared to you, um, than, uh, than the nobodies are. Once again, emphasizing that the Heartless are no longer the threat. This isn't Kingdom Hearts 1, where the Heartless were the threat. They were going to eat the world and destroy all of reality and consume everything into darkness. And that was the co problem. In this game, the Heartless are just everywhere, but they're much weaker because they're not the problem. They are quite literally being fed to us so we can create hearts for Organization 13. Uh, for the Artificial Kingdom Hearts uh, gateway thing. And uh, and I like the way they present that in gameplay and in story. It's nice. It also is reflected in how Maleficent is basically kind of, you know, not really a threat anymore. Sora, this is not hard to figure out. Look how evil he looks. Master Redford. It's an honor. Hey there. Sora, show some respect. So, you are Sora. Now then, have you seen the king yet? Yes, we did, Master. But we didn't get a chance to talk to him. Yes, the king has been quite busy of late. Therefore... It would seem that the task of instructing you three falls upon my shoulders. First, I'm going to tell you falsehoods. You then lies. Then I will tell you untruths. <laughs> you Sorry. Sorry. We have to go on another quest? Uh, there are PS3 versions of multiple of the games put on the PS3 shmoo. So... I gotta share something. So, I... Uh, when I was talking... Uh, when I was doing the lore run a couple weeks ago with my friend, I had to pause here and be like, okay, look, I know this doesn't come up until Dream Drop Distance, but I have to tell you something in advance now. Nobodies have hearts. And I told him all the stuff I've already told you guys about the droid effect when it comes to the nobodies. Um, so, and then I mentioned, so yeah, he is, he is giving you misinformation here. And I kind of phrased it badly. I basically said everything he says here is wrong. Now, my friend decided to take that literally, so every single sentence, and I mean all of them, that Jens had said, he would be like, oh, so this is, so it's the exact opposite. I was looking forward to finding my friend Riku. So, for example. So go back to the islands. Yes, I know. I don't know. However, everything in Nothing is connected, Sora. Sora. Is connected. Whether you will find your way home to the island. You will not find your way home to the islands. Whether you will return. You will not return alone with your friend. Your friend. And whether the islands will islands definitely be there. Still be there. You know, he kept, he just was doing it the whole and time. The it was really funny. That connects them all. Sora, you, you don't connect anything at all. <laughs> I'm the key? Sorry. You mean <laughs> this key? Chosen wielder of the keyblade. You are the key that will open the door to light. You will not open the door to light. He really does, Green. He looks so evil. He even sounds like a bad guy. Don't worry, guys. We'll be speculating for another seven years about Kingdom Hearts 3, because it's not going to come out for seven freaking years. This book contains valuable knowledge you will need for your journey. 
This book contains no knowledge. Do not study it. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. Once you have finished, we will speak of one the more, enemies one more. you will surely... We will not speak about the enemies you will confront. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah. None, because I'm done. Don't have to read the stupid thing. But, wait a sec. How come the Heartless are still running around? Kyrie is most likely the light, Your Myron. Your past endeavors did prevent an immense effusion of Heartless. You did not prevent the Heartless. heartless. Make no mistake about that. However, the Heartless are darkness made real, and darkness yet lingers in every heart. D Yensid is actually based off of the, uh, the wizard in The Wizard's Apprentice uh, in Fantasia. Um, he is called Yensid because Disney, so. The Heartless are fewer, but while darkness exists in a single heart, it will be difficult to eliminate them. Why do we have to eliminate darkness? Gorge, that must mean if everybody's heart was full of light, them Heartless would go away. Now, um. It is time to speak of the enemies that you will encounter. Also, I find it interesting that Yensid has illusory magic. Just interesting to me. Considering he used to be a Keyblade wielder. If one such as you, Donald, yields to the darkness in their heart. You will become a weak and pathetic heartless. heartless. The smallest of all heartless, because your heart you is weak, this. Donald. Yes, I did, Ace. The Heartless are always lurking and ever seeking to capture new hearts. Never let your guard down. Now then. And there's Donald, also the weakest form of nobody. If someone with a strong heart and will, be they evil or good, becomes a Heartless, the empty shell they leave behind begins to act with a will of its Note own. Note his description isn't even, like, fully accurate in the way he's saying it. I've already described to you what nobodies really are. His description is, like, a sort of a vague explanation of what's going on. You get the very strong impression Yensid really doesn't know much about this. And as we find out uh, somewhere, and I honestly don't remember where, uh, a decent amount of Yensid's information about the nobodies and the Heartless actually comes from Ansem the Wise. Uh, so it kind of makes sense that his information would be mistaken. An empty vessel whose heart has been stolen away. A spirit that goes on even as its body fades from existence. For you see, no bodies do not truly exist at all. Ugh, that line. No bodies may seem to have... And been, this line! This is a ruse. They only pretend to have hearts. You must not be deceived. <sighs> Nobodies. They don't exist. Now then, the being you see before you is known as a Dusk. They are the most common form of nobody. But there are others. Thirteen, some larger, actually. Some Absolutely. with frightening and unique powers. Be vigilant. On your journey, you will meet an alarming number of dusks. They will all attempt to do you harm. That is the weirdest comparison ever, Roaring Middleman. Still, they are nothing but empty shells destined to return to darkness. We are not certain but... of that, no, Nerozaz. Like, it is actually genuinely possible Yensid has some ulterior motive. The beings you see before you now are different. These powerful nobodies have... So this one's Xemnas. I'm pretty sure that's Demix. I'm not sure who that one is. I'd have, to th I'd have to look at it Organization closely. 13. Got it. Organization 13 are bad guys. While heartless act on instinct, nobody is functioning in a higher manner. They can think and plan, and it seems they are working towards a goal. What that goal is, we do not know. That might be Syx, yeah. 
The king sensed the danger and journeyed forth to fight it. Because bad people he use the darkness, the dark and so people associate the darkness with, with bad things. To the door. Basically. Now he's traveling from world to world, fighting the heartless. As he no, I think that is actually. Uh, the that might not be Sayex. And organization. 13. I don't know. Then I guess we better go find the king first. What world could he be? Well, we won't know till we look. Yeah, and the king must know where Riku is, because the two of them were together in the realm of darkness when we closed. That the was door a year ago. After defeating Ansem. So, before you go, you will need more suitable traveling clothes. Those look a bit too small for you. Through there, you'll find three good fairies. If you <laughs> ask, they'll create for Are they like good fellas? Appropriate garments. Gore, Sora, you sure are growing fast. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess I grew a year in a day, because I still haven't figured out that it's been a year yet. In fairness, no one's told him. There. So, don't want to be too harsh there. Like I said, Green, I'm pretty sure as of this moment, Sora isn't aware of the fact that it's been a year. Why am I saving? Never save! Um... Uh, Xemnas has power over nobodies because his element is the power of nothingness. Of course, why his element is the power of nothingness is a more debatable question. Uh, I believe it's due to the unique nature of Xemnas' creation as a nobody, since he's not a typical nobody. Me, you guys, Riku, and the King. I don't care who this organization is or what it's planning. With the five of us, I mean, six of us, there's nothing to worry about, right? Yeah. yeah, admittedly, I would too. Until I looked at myself and said, hey, I've grown a lot in a day. So, I was debating saving this. You know, that's a good point. He couldn't count. Sora literally couldn't count and called himself on it. Sora's dumb. Uh, whoops. Turned off my function keys. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Um. Yeah, you notice that, Samurai? <laughs> nice little touch there. Anyways. Oh, stretch. Well, of course not. They haven't aged in like 50 years. Uh, Chaos Springer. Anyways, real quick thing here. I want to talk about this uh, later when we get to the Demig scene, but this is again an example of Sora having that childish mentality. You remember back in uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, in Monstro of all places, we actually saw the beginnings, the real beginnings of this mentality and this problem that Sora has. The problem of seeing things in such a simple, childish, black and white manner. You're the bad guys and I'm the good guy. The end. See Majora's Mask references for another example of this. So, he automatically assumes, okay, nobody's bad guys, I'm a good guy. It's really simple. And it do this is one of the first reasons why Sora's a dick throughout the course of this game. Because he automatically, foolishly, childishly assumes that all nobodies are bad guys and I don't have to think of them as people. Even the one that looks like people, no, no, Yen Sid told me they're not people so it's okay. So I can just treat them as if they're the bad guys and, and, and bad guys have to be defeated. I've already done this, I've figured this out. So yes, I will defeat all the bad guys. Which brings me to the second reason why Sora is so dumb in this freaking game. Yen Sid, and the fact that Yen Sid and many other people are going to be feeding him misinformation and flat out wrong information throughout the course of the entire game. And of course, the third reason is very, very obvious. He is a broken person. He is the incomplete, improper com combination of Roxas and himself, also including Shion somewhere in there. So, literally, he is quite functionally broken internally. So, three... Three pretty simple reasons right off the top. There's actually more reasons we'll go over later, but three reasons we've already seen, as of now, for why Sora acts the way he does and is basically, um, dumb. This is a nice touch that I believe is new to the final, uh, mix thing. You look at these, uh, you look at these mirrors and you see each one of the, uh, the forms, including that one's limit form. 
That one's, uh... That one's Final Form. This one's Master Form. Uh, this one is, uh, uh, Heartless Form. I forget what it's called. But yeah, Heartless Form. That, that well, was... Look who's yeah. here, dears. Sora, Donald, oh. and Goofy. Quick, Sora, Donald, Goofy. Oh, if you're looking for clothes, you've come to the right place. Anti-form, that's what it's called. I'll do the designing. I liked Heartless Form better. That's actually what I was calling it, too. Uh, two weeks ago. No, oh, that will never do. I might be breaking for lunch uh, very oh, soon, now, by the way, guys. Dears. But don't you like this? Like I said, Green, those are the only... Those are the, the reasons we've already seen, and we'll be seeing more reasons in the future for why Sora is so messed up in this are game. I've mentioned that because it is very important that people understand that Sora is not badly written in this game. He he is messed up. He is screwed up. There is something. There are several things fundamentally wrong with him, which are completely ruining his reality. All right then, together now, dears, and no more squabbling. Oh, there's plenty of interesting things to talk about in Recoded. Oh, I'm being invited to lunch, so yeah, we're going to pause for a little lovely. bit here. Oh, yes. he does look very Aren't we all, Brigwin? Aren't we all? Now those aren't ordinary garments. They have very special powers. I do like the look a lot. He looks cool. I'm sorry. I like that outfit. He looks cool. It suits him. So I think that's a good look for Sora. Uh, also, this unlocks his ability to transform into forms by combining with the powers of someone else. In this case, uh, being able to be more martially strong because he combines with Goofy, more magically powerful because he combines with uh, Donald, both when he combines with both, uh, becoming ridiculously powerful if he combines with Roxas, which is what Final Form is, and of course Anti-Form, which is the darkness in Sora's heart starting to manifest itself, which is actually the very beginning of Sora giving in to darkness, which happens in Dream Drop Distance. So, that's pretty cool that they had that foreshadowing uh, this early on. Oh, and of course there's uh, Limit Form, which is him... Uh, going into that original childish mentality from the previous thing. See, so yeah, I think we're going to cut off uh, and do the lunch thing pretty much now. I think, because I'm pretty sure I know what the next cutscene is. Yep, I'm right. So this is a good time to do it. This is a good time to do it. So I'm going to put this on the charger. I'm just going to pause the game right here, as I've already done. Then I'm going to go get food. Then I'm going to stab the world. So I'll be back in a few, guys.